Lord Sip, Namaskar. Yeah, no, my, my pleasure. Welcome, Thank sir. You. Thank you. How are you, Mahesh? Good. Ah, Sikri Sahib, how are you? I'm fine. What a pleasure, what a Hello, pleasure to be morning. on the same platform. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's my pleasure. <laughs> great, great, how are you, sir? Even I'm fine. I'm fine. Good, good. I'm so glad. Uh, so should we begin sir i think we are ready yes yes we are ready thank you thank you so much One eighty five students have already joined. Wonderful. One ninety. Good. I, I don't see uh, Professor C. Rajkumar. Rajkumar is, I think, joining. He is attempting. I think I could see. Okay. okay. Let me see. I think. Meanwhile, we can start. I guess because I think we all are running against the time. Especially, sir, I know your engagement uh, yeah. later today. All right. A very good morning to all. I, Dr. Brinkley, faculty RBNL, and your host for the day. I welcome you all uh, to the inaugural ceremony of the orientation schedule 2021 for the new members of the NLB Honors Fiber Integrated Course and NLN Vanya program. I invite Professor Dr. B. S. Vajpai, uh, worthy Vice Chancellor RGNL, to formally welcome the August gathering. Sir, please. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Justice A.K. Sikri, former Judge, Supreme Court of India, Shri Mahesh Jetmalani ji, Member of Parliament and Senior Advocate, Professor Rajkumar, Founder Vice Chancellor, O.P. Jindal Global University, Registrar RGNUL, Professor Naresh, Faculty Members of RGNUL and Staff Members, my dear students and parents who have joined today to this inaugural uh, and uh, student orientation session at the Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law. I welcome all present. I particularly congratulate all the students who have cleared prestigious CLAC 21 and joined this university, Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law. Friends, uh, at the outset, I also wish to share that the Chief Minister uh, Punjab Captain uh, Shri uh, Amrinder Singh Ji was supposed to join. He has sent me wishes. He has some engagement today and he has shared his wishes. He has sent me a communication which I will be sharing with you. And uh, I also take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the Chancellor and Chief Justice Punjab and Haryana High Court, uh, Honorable Justice R.S. Jha for his continued support to this university. And this is also my duty to acknowledge the support and guidance of all the members of Finance Committee, Academic Council, Executive Council, and Governing Council of RGNUL, and also my predecessors in this university, late Professor Gurjit Singh and Professor P.S. Jaswal for bringing this university at a very remarkable level in a very short period of time. The contribution of faculty members, and staff members, and everyone associated with RGNULU is also acknowledged in the journey of excellence achieved by this university in past one decade. Very warm welcome to all, all the students and all present again. It's a momentous occasion for this university to welcome and receive the new batch of students to its graduate program. Friends, in the past few years, the RG annual has made its mark in the journey of excellence in the field of legal education, which is demonstrated by its impressive score in NAC and NIV, and this university has been consistently getting ranked in top 10 slots and top five slots continuously over the past five years. The students' performance, especially in mooting section, has been amazingly remarkable. In so many places, they have brought tremendous achievements to this university, and they have made a mark in the country and in fact, RGNUL mooting teams are known for their 
you know, sterling performance uh, all through. Uh, legal aid section of the university particularly has done tremendous work in all these years. I'm very satisfied to note that they have started recently some important initiatives, including legal entrepreneurship and other kinds of uh, incubation center and many more things. So in my short welcome note, I have the, I, I'm just trying to share the idea of being at RGNUL and uh, at this occasion, this is a very important occasion. We in academic institution knows two very important occasions: admission and convocation. In between, a lot of things happens. So you are at the threshold, and I I acknowledge that your arrival has filled us with energy and excitement. With a new session comes new opportunity for academic and personal growth, and we look forward to encouraging you along this exciting journey of learning and discovery. As students, you are the heart of our campus community and the motivation of our faculty and staff member. We are part of a proud university family. Your journey to unlocking your wildest dream has indeed commenced. It's exhilarating to know that you hold the power to unlock opportunities, to realize your dreams and carve out an absolutely awesome future for yourself. This is, of course, and comes with a very important responsibility. We all know that knowledge will bring you the opportunity to make a difference, and that is why we are all here. Yes, boys and girls, with this, with, uh, with the university, the study comes a great deal of responsibility and at times even sacrifices. Our journey, you may experience peaks and valleys. When the road becomes winding and you start to become weary, do not fret, help is available. All you need to do is to ask us. So I would say that you are here to avail a wonderful opportunity. Yes, we are aware that we had certain degree of constraints which the pandemic has shown. However, I believe that we are trying very hard to make it as fruitful as possible. And you will soon realize that we have tried to compensate this absence of the students through a variety of new teaching methodologies, new teaching modes, different measures, different teachings and tools and techniques that we are trying to deploy, which would definitely assist you in terms of achieving the best of the RGNUL. It's a glorious campus. I'm, soon, I'm sure that soon the things will improve and we'll have the opportunity to welcome you physically on the campus. This is perhaps the most beautiful and scenic campus amongst all the law schools in the country. And I really wish that we should come together. So I always say, go on, dream big. And yes, there is one thing that beats the feeling of being accepted to your favorite university, achieving your goals, especially after you have worked exceptionally hard. The only failure is not to try. I, I have a detailed you know, address to be made later after this session where I will try to detail you the some remarkable feature of this university, pedagogy, different arrangements in the interest of students, and a variety of programs which would empower you as a student, and you will soon realize the idea of being at RGNUL. And with this, I close, and once again, I take this opportunity to welcome my guest, my friend uh, uh, Rajkumar has also joined. I extend my warm welcome to you. He's the Vice Chancellor at the OP Jindal Global University, who, uh, and uh, now this is the time to invite uh, Honorable uh, Mr. Justice A.K. Sikri, who has kindly consented to be with us this morning, despite his busy schedule and uh, other you know, engagement. His association with this university is really, really very special, as he has been the Chief Justice of Punjab and Haryana High Court. In that capacity, he has also been the Chancellor of uh, this university. So I thought it proper to invite him to address and inspire this newly admitted batch of students. And I'm sure, sir, your presence will be extremely useful. By way of introduction, everybody uh, is aware of his contribution to the legal field, but a very small brief introduction that he is an eminent jurist and a former judge of the Supreme Court of India. And he has taken over as judge in the Supreme Court on 12th April 2013. And earlier, he had served the Chief Justice of Punjab and Haryana High Court from September 
2012 to April 2013. He retired as senior most recent judge of Supreme Court of India on 6 March 2019. Importantly, he is an international judge at the Singapore International Commercial Court, Singapore Supreme Court. He has shown in to the post on 2nd of August 2019 by the President of Singapore. He is also the chairperson of News Broadcasting Standards. Prasikri is known for his academic inclination. Therefore, he has been associated with uh, uh, certain national law universities in the capacity of distinguished professors and visiting faculty. And uh, I need not to tell that his uh, specialization is particularly in the field of commercial and arbitration laws, tax laws, intellectual property matters, and economic laws has been really, really remarkable. And we know his contribution to a large number of very significant judgment, which has shaped the direction of jurisprudence in this country. So, sir, thank you so much for being with us today. And I request now, uh, very honorably, to kindly address uh, these almost 200 students present over here, along with more than 50 faculty members and other guests who, who are with us today. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Bajpayee, and good morning to all of you, including my dear friends, Professor Rajkumar and Mr. Mahesh Jetmalani, who are also here today, sharing this dais on virtual mode, of course, uh, with all of us. And uh, it is indeed an honor to be here and uh, to be invited by Professor Bajpayee on this occasion because uh, one thing is that I always want to interact with young students. Of course, I will not, we will not be able to do so in uh, physical mode. And uh, uh, this is not that kind of uh, occasion also where one could have interacted in the manner in which I wanted. But yes, the, uh, whatever time I have at my disposal, 10 to 12, 13 minutes, I'll be interacting with you. And uh, I have a very, uh, I mean, my fond memories and uh, fond association insofar as uh, your law school is concerned. Uh, as uh, Professor Bajpay said that uh, I was chancellor of this university in the capacity of uh, uh, my being chief justice of uh, Punjab and Haryana I put at that time. And he rightly mentioned that it's uh, one of the most beautiful campuses uh, uh, as far as uh, law schools are concerned. Uh, at, at that time, it was almost at the stage of completion, and but the faculty had not shifted. Uh, the law school had not shifted at that time, but uh, the first convocation which we did was from uh, this campus. and. Uh, uh, I wish that you are able to uh, have the uh, physical uh, uh, classes as early as possible and you will be mesmerized by the uh, facilities uh, which are provided uh, in this campus. For this very reason, let me congratulate all of you who have been able to make it to this uh, university. Uh, as uh, Professor Bajpi has already given you the indication or uh, reflected on some of the features uh, of this university and the kind of uh, uh, curriculum and the position also of uh, this university, which ranks always in first five or first ten. So therefore, taking admission to such a uh, law university itself is a matter of pride for all of you. And uh, I, I know that uh, uh, several thousand persons must have applied for this admission and you sat in that uh, competition and ultimately could get through. So therefore, uh, my congratulations on that to all of you. And I wish that you have wonderful uh, insofar as uh, uh, the uh, graduate LLB is concerned, wonderful five years uh, tenure and those who have uh, joined LLM, the postgraduate, uh, also wonderful tenure uh, in this university. Uh, actually, I was, uh, uh, let me tell you one thing, and uh, which I find that nowadays uh, joining law or law course is a matter of choice for most of you, which was, as uh, all of us would uh, recollect, whether it is uh, Mahesh 
uh, maybe Rajkumar is little younger than us, but uh, maybe in his time also, but definitely in our times that it used to be considered as a choice uh, which was a last resort. If you are not able to get admission anywhere else, you will come and join law. Because, uh, and I still remember, although I was merit holder in uh, my graduation, my father was a lawyer, so I wanted to become a lawyer, like Mr. Uh, Mahesh Jait Malani, whose father, everybody knows Mr. Ram Jait Malani, one of the best counsel uh, which uh, India has produced post-independence. So I wanted, but many who didn't know me asked me that, oh, you must have got third division and uh, maybe that uh, you couldn't get admission anywhere else and you have come to law. So these kinds of remarks I used to hear. And let me tell you one anecdote of one of our teachers. Uh, 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 Raj, I don't know whether they, because Mr. Rajkumar, Professor Rajkumar also studied from uh, uh, law faculty, Delhi University, from where I studied, whether one Mr. Professor Mohrana was yes. at that time he was there okay he was so around, he used yeah. To tell us, yeah he used to tell us in class that students don't come here to do law but they come here to find in laws so that is that that, that was the kind of uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, the priority insofar as law is concerned but today the things have totally totally changed in last 15 20 years no doubt about it and uh, i remember uh, one uh, uh, program on TV many, many years ago, maybe again 15 years ago or so, I was watching, it used to come at that time, where uh, Mr. Anupam Kher used to interact with kids, seven or eight, nine uh, children of uh, ages, maybe from uh, five, six years up to uh, 11, 12 years, and he would interact, and it was very interesting program. Of course, not that I uh, used to watch that regularly, but once I happened to watch that, and uh, very interesting thing which I heard at that time, it, it may be eight or nine years old girl, and he asked her, what do you want to become in life? And you know what was her answer, which amazed me? She said, I want to be a corporate lawyer. Sure. Not only a lawyer, it, an eight or nine years girl knows what is the meaning of corporate lawyer. So therefore, we have come from that stage to this stage. But let me tell you, no doubt, it's a, a profession which attracts many nowadays because uh, uh, of the coverage which uh, uh, the legal news receive in media, uh, whether it is print media or whether it is electronic media. And every day, what, what is happening in our times, it, there used to be hardly one news, maybe in one or two months. Today, there are two or three pages full of legal news. And we know what is happening. But let me tell you most important thing which I want to say is that what is the significance of uh, uh, legal profession and joining this uh, legal profession after doing your law today. We are a liberal democracy. We are a country where constitution is the apex law. Every other law has to be subordinated, which we'll learn all and which we call it as norm also. But this constitution is the instrument of the governance of this country. And it inheres in it the values which you will see of liberal democracy. When, and when I talk of liberal democracy, that doesn't mean, what I mean is that it is not a democracy in the name where majority rules, but where rule of law prevails. And it is a concept of limited government. That is the government, even elected government, which forms or the legislature, they are also bound by the provisions of the constitution and they have to act in that. And there are fundamental rights which are given to all the citizens, which include, if I may not uh, say much, but right to equality. There are certain funda freedoms given to us, which is right to speech, right to carry on business, etc. under Article 19, and most cherished right, right to liberty and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, right to life and liberty under Article 20. Why I'm saying, and, and above uh, all rule of law, that it is, is a rule of law. Howsoever mighty you may be, you may be the prime minister of the country or you may be peon. You are equal and law is above you. You have to subscribe. And this, it's given in the constitution, but at the same time from very beginning, and, and that's a history not only in India, but elsewhere also, that 
such rights are violated time and again. I need not, because of paucity of time, go into this in detail. But what I'm trying to say is, whenever there is a threat to the freedom of people, because freedom or liberty is the bedrock of any democracy. So whenever there is a threat to this uh, 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 liberty of people, whenever they are deprived of their rights, it is this community that is our legal community, which has to safeguard those rights. I say that there are two uh, basic functions which the judges in this country perform under the constitution and the lawyers they assist or they rather I won't say even assist I will go to the extent of saying that they guide the uh, judges in performing that function. One is to uphold the rule of law and the values of the constitution and other is to bridge the gap between the law and the society where when it comes to the rights to be given to marginalized section of the society, the deprived section of the society, or uh, uh, it may be rights to women, rights to LGBT community, rights to disabled, etc. So therefore, have that yes, there is enough money that uh, that, that, that there are. Uh, I mean, uh, the fields of commercial law also and other fields where you can, but cherish this freedom that and value of this freedom and when you are walking the corridors of this uh, 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 is this university either on virtual mode or on physical mode i hope that physical mode classes would start start that imbibe that kind of uh, uh, um, feeling in you and that kind of spirit in you that is what is expected and uh, <clears throat> so therefore uh, 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 now coming to uh, it is said Palki Wala, one of the greatest lawyers, again, uh, you will read about him in your, uh, uh, during the course uh, of your studies and uh, the kind of cases which he argued, etc. But uh, he had said uh, in one of his speeches that there are two kinds of fools in this uh, world. One, those who give advice. Well, if you are giving advice to somebody else, then you are a fool. That is one kind of fool. And other kind of fool is those who listen to those advice but don't heed to that advice even if it is good i am ready to be the fool of first category and will like to give you advice provided you are not a fool of second category and you will listen to what i am saying so that now i am going to say in the next two three four minutes as to what is again i mean uh, quoting from mr palki Wala, which where he has said in one that what is the real education and uh, yes, you are going to study law, you will study various uh, enactments, laws which are passed by the parliament and other things and what is the meaning of law, etc. But he said, and I'm quoting, that education has been called the technique of transmitting civilization. And in order that it may transmit civilization, it has to perform two functions. What is that? Number one, it must enlighten the understanding, understanding of the person. And number two, it must enrich the character of the person. So therefore, overarching principles in the education that the education has to be of this nature and you have to that it should enlighten your understanding and it should enrich your character. And in order to enlighten the understanding, again, there are the, the two marks of a person whose understanding has been enlightened. Number one, capacity to think clearly. And number two, intellectual curiosity. Both these attributes are so important when you study. They may be in other field also, but then they become very, very important in the field of law. And insofar as enriching the character is concerned, that uh, uh, it has again, uh, for ideal character, you have to have vitality, courage, uh, then uh, 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 this uh, intelligence, these are again very, very necessary attributes which you would be requiring in uh, uh, when you practice law and when you do all those kinds of cases, as I said, to protect the freedom and uh, uh, of the person and when you want these marginalized sections of society to be given their uh, rights in actuality and they don't remain on papers. And uh, I would only because of paucity of time won't go into the, uh, all that in detail. But now my, my request to uh, the uh, um, Professor Bajpayee and his team also that how to 
deal with you as students and particularly those who have uh, uh, been uh, have come from uh, say 10 plus 2 and uh, are uh, most of you may be teenagers as of today and uh, these are the formative years of yours and uh, i am here only uh, ending this with this a message to the university and with this one anecdote and uh, that is uh, actually very interesting uh, you may have heard of uh, one uh, painter and sculpture, a very world famous uh, Michelangelo from Italy. And he has several masterpieces uh, to his credit. Uh, and, but the best which he created, and it is called David, which he uh, created from uh, the uh, uh, marble, which was 18 uh, feet uh, long marble. It was lying on the uh, th this now, let me tell you, uh, this uh, David, which is a st now statue which he created, is uh, in the city of Florence, and it uh, adorns that uh, Florence city, and it is treated as one of the marvels of the world. But the story goes like this. It was the 18 feet marble which was lying there, and uh, the uh, authorities of the day at that time wanted that something uh, should be done to uh, this marble and some uh, thing should be created. So they had gone to various persons, including Da Vinci. Again, Da Vinci has been the top uh, persons as well as, uh, 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 I mean, if you read about his life and it was very, very inspiring. But everybody dismissed that uh, as a, useful, uh, a useless piece of marble and nobody worked on that. It is only Michelangelo who accepted the challenge and that is what he created. But story is not this which I wanted to tell. This is the story, but the message which I wanted to tell. What happened when he was working on this and was beating this marble with his hammer and tong, etc. Um, the, the sculptures, they work like that. And one boy was passing through at that time and he asked Michelangelo, he, why you are uh, 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 beating or why you are uh, 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 hammering this uh, stone too hard and you know what was his reply his reply was young man there is an angel inside that rock and I'm just setting him free so my message to professor Bajpay and his team is there is an angel in each and every student who have joined you today you have to yes not by beating in the manner in which uh, Michelangelo did with that uh, marble or that stone, because they are not stones, they are living be beings, but you have to set that angel free. You have to ensure that the, they are created in that kind of sculptures, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that they become the shining examples to this world. So this is what I would say is the uh, 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 um, uh, responsibility of the university and I'm sure that university would uh, live up to uh, its reputation and uh, 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 give one of the finest kind of education and my congratulations again to all of you and best of luck and uh, have a wonderful wonderful tenure thank you very much Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for such an inspiring words to the students. Sir, I have to leave. <laughs> well, my arbitration starts at 10.30, so I told you. I, I knew, thank sir. You. I knew. Thank but you. thank you so I, much I, for I, your I time. Know, I know Mahesh and uh, you see, it's a very good combination. One okay. from judiciary, one from the legal community, a lawyer yeah. who is one of the yeah. best lawyers. And one who is the best academician today, yeah. Professor Rajkumar. And I think they could not have been. So they will guide you. They will tell you much, much better things than what I have done. So, but I, I, I'll uh, listen to their uh, speeches later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you Perfect. so much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we now request. Uh, Honorable uh, Mr. Mayor Jay Milani ji to come and address the on this gathering. Uh, to introduce him uh, is not really required, but just uh, saying a few words uh, about him. Mayor Jay Milani sir has been an Indian lawyer and a politician. 
He is being currently nominated as the Mark Member of Parliament in the Rajya Sabha. He was also a member of the National Executive of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh, he has handled various uh, critical criminal and uh, civil cases like the trial of the former uh, Chief Minister of Maharashtra, A.R. Antile. He has represented the Birla family in the Prim Mada Birla case and has also appeared for the Anil Ambani case in the Reliance matter. Then he has also represented the Chief Minister uh, Narendra Modi in the Gujarat side cases in the Supreme Court of India as well as the Gujarat Home Minister Amit Shah in the Surabhudin murder case in the Gujarat High Court and the Supreme Court of India. I request Mahir Jait Milani sir to kindly address the gathering. Sir, please. Honorable Ex-Justice Sikri in absentia since he has left. Uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Bajpai, Vice Chancellor Professor Rajkumar, OP Jindal University in Sonipat, faculty members of this renowned institution, and my young friends who are about to embark upon a landmark and exciting journey <coughs> of learning en route, undoubtedly, to us to very successful careers. A personal note first of Justice Sikri, who's not here, but I hope he'll hear this speech. It must be said that he lit up his court with his intellectual glow. He was a model judge who presided over his court with decorum and dignity. His judgments are lofty and it will stand the test of time. He is a stellar example of why the retirement age of Supreme Court judges should be many years beyond 65. My friend, Professor Bajpai, is a scholar par excellence, author of many a book, including one I surprisingly read on India-China relations regarding the shadow of Sikkim. I worked closely with him on the Criminal Law Reform Committee instituted by the Home Ministry, whose work is almost complete. And if that report reaches parliament and becomes law, we will usher in an era of speedy investigations and trials and a very humane criminal justice, justice system. Professor Bajpai's contribution to the committee cannot be overstated. By the way, he is also an achiever, and I have personal experience of this. Within a couple of months as vice chancellor, he has peppered me with a proposal to sponsor a chair in, in this university in memory of my late father, a proposal which, because of his doggedness, is under consideration as I speak, and I hope that in the future, we will have such a chair, Professor Bajpai. Thank you. First of all, let me congratulate all of you, 180 students odd, in your successful entrance into the portals of this university. Your admission here is itself proof of your ability, your industry, and your competitiveness. While the university and its learned and experienced faculty will educate you in the various subjects, compulsory or optional, which will form part of your curriculum. As a legal practitioner now of well nigh 41 years, it falls upon me to impart to you practical advice and guidance on both the matter of your education and your career. First, as to your time here, do not squander this opportunity which by dint of hard work and merit you have created for yourself. Grab it with both hands and make every moment of your university time count. Whatever you choose to do with your law degree, these three career years are your most formative. And this is where your molding is complete and you become a finished product, ripe for the shouldering of career responsibilities. As in every academic case, you will learn both by textbook and the words of wisdom you will hear at your lectures. Do not attend lectures without at least some, some background reading in the subject of the lecture concerned. First, try to understand the subject yourself. Even a minimal knowledge will make your lectures more comprehensible and more interesting. Lectures are meaningful only if they are interactive and they cannot be interactive if your mind is a blank page. Attend all lectures and read all textbooks with an air of inquiry. In other words, the Socratic approach. 
do not accept textbook propositions as immutable truths. The law is always gradually, uh, is always evolving, although gradually. This does not mean that you ignore case precedents, for these are the law. But to be a good lawyer, you must learn the art of distinguishing precedents to the facts of your case. The best lawyers are those who are innovative, who think out of the box, and even question the conventional wisdom. You must be fanatical about research. In my student days, we were handicapped because all we had compared to today was reports, to, uh, law reports to unearth propositions of law. In this information era, you, have, you are blessed with desktops, uh, with laptops, iPads, and most of all, a plethora of search engines. Use them. Genius in law is a combination of perspiration, inspiration, and flair. The best lawyers excel in advocacy. Moot courts are a fertile breeding ground for honing eloquence. They are also excellent platforms for, for spontaneous thinking on ones. feet of thinking on one's feet, an essential skill in a lawyer's repertoire. While at university, use your vacations productively. Apply for internships at reputed universities. In this respect, spread your internships over chambers or firms with different specialities, civil, criminal, corporate, labor, etc. Internships will give you an early bird's eye view of the actual working of the legal system. <laughs> also, even if you don't have an internship, a visit to the courts when a proficient lawyer is unleashing his craft is a great learning experience, especially if you are intending to practice criminal law, watching an adept cross-examiner, inflicting his skills on a witness, is a sight to behold. As Shakespeare's <clears throat> Julius Caesar said, experience is the teacher of all things. So even as you learn the law in your classes simultaneously, make a visit to the courts <coughs> to see the law's application in the many available forums of justice. And what of the practice of law itself? If your goal is to make money, then there is much to be made. India is a prolifically litigious country. People have the means to pay well in this country. And whether the economy is in boom or bust, lawyers are a must. Remember that. They'll always be in demand. The first five or six years of practice may be a struggle. But most of you, with the kind of education and background with which you will join the profession will be success stories in the long run. But patience in your early years and resistance to the urge to quit for poor returns in the beginning is a necessary virtue. The initial crawl is worth it because once you are established, the sky is the limit. But our system is broken and debased. And I need a word of caution here. It needs fixing. Endemic delays in the disposal of cases has led, led to a crushing burden of case arrears. People have started gaming our legal system and corruption is rife, particularly in the lower judiciary. A coterie of lawyers, fixers has emerged without whose participation corruption in the judiciary would not be possible. But moves are afoot by those who cherish our system of the rule of law to stem the rot and rejuvenate our justice system. There is much hope for the future, so let me not disillusion you. On the other hand, practice of the law requires fervent passion. I want to stir you to be the vanguard 
of our constitutional values as and when you choose a career in law. The future belongs to you. So resolve to make the system that will feed you an ethical one. Before you commence practice, imbibe the code of ethics for lawyers. Your duty, of course, is to your clients. But the boundary of that duty is client confidentiality, honesty in financial dealings, and diligence when you are handling his brief. You do not win at all costs, and so you do not tamper or destroy evidence or suborn witnesses. You are first and foremost an officer of the court whose prime duty is to truth and justice. When I first commenced my practice, my late father's mandate was me, to me was, you must so conduct yourself that even if you lose your case, don't lose your client. If you lose your client, don't lose the court. And if you must lose the court even, only do so, so that you do not lose your conscience. So to you, the class of lawyers who will join the profession in 2026, I remind you that you are heirs to a great tradition of outstanding lawyers. Those who fought for our independence, those others who adorned the constituent assembly that gave us that magnificent document, the Constitution of India, and those others yet who rescued the Constitution from the subversion it was subjected to in the dark days of emergency India between 1975 and 1977. One or the other of you will serve the country and the profession by punishing the guilty, saving the innocent, protecting women from rape and sexual offenses, wives from marital cruelty and domestic violence, workmen from exploitation and poor wages, children from child labor and sexual predators, farmers <laughs> from greedy middlemen, industry from monopolies, investors from Ponzi schemes, banks from scamsters, stock markets from insider trading, intellectual property from theft, morality from pornography, the media from state censorship, and the state from sedition. But all of you, I pray, will put law and justice at a premium. Guard our constitutional rights with vigilance, battle against corruption in public life with zeal, and strive to preserve the integrity of the nation with the robust passion of the patriot. I wish you all the best, and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maheshi. Thank you so much for your time. It's very inspiring and a very wonderful narration for coming from you to the budding lights. It means a lot. I, I know that you you are supposed to go for a meeting at a place I know, I am aware. But really, thank you so much for sparing your time. This is wonderful. Very thank useful. you, Professor Bajpayee. And, I, I, and my apologies to Sri Rajkumar. I, I will be missing, but I will Perfect. certainly catch up with your speech uh, subsequently. This, thank this, you all. Uh, this entire program is going live on uh, YouTube and Twitter and everywhere. So we will have opportunity to listen even after some time, whenever you are free. So you can uh, just log in and uh, listen. I will so, most certainly do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We are grateful to Jait Milani, sir, for uh, his very useful and encouraging inputs to the students of law and encouraging them towards how they are supposed to be pursuing their law course and subsequently how they'll be uh, conducting themselves while they join the legal profession. I now invite Professor C. Rajkumar, sir, the founding vice chancellor of OP General Global University to kindly address the gathering. But before he joins, I take the pleasure and opportunity to introduce him. He has been the uh, vice chancellor, the founding vice chancellor of OP Jindal Global University in Sonipat, Haryana, and the dean Jindal Global Law School. He's also been a proud recipient of the Rhodes Scholarship, 
Rajkumar sir has been a member of the National Legal Knowledge Council in India. He has been associated with the consultancy in the field of human rights and governance. He has been a consultant to the United Nations University, Tokyo, the UNDP and the International Council for Human Rights Policy, Geneva. He holds the position of being an advisor to the Committee of Investigation uh, in, to a committee to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption in Sri Lanka and also the NHRC in India. He has been a research fellow at NYU Law School where he dreamt of building an institution like Harvard and Oxford in India and with his untiring efforts, he has actually been able to bring his dream to a reality. Sir, I request you to kindly address and share your inputs to, uh, with our gathering. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very good morning to all of you. At the outset, I want to, of course, uh, thank uh, Honorable Mr. Justice A.K. Sikri, former Judge Supreme Court of India, uh, for his very thought-provoking and inspiring address. I also want to thank uh, Honorable Member of Parliament and Senior Advocate Supreme Court of India, Mr. Mahesh Jetmalani, who again added so much of insights to the legal profession. Uh, for all the students who are present here, you couldn't have had, uh, you know, two uh, better individuals who represent two facets of the legal profession to share their thoughts and insights on this very special day. I want to um, extend my heartiest congratulations first to uh, a very dear friend and also a senior, uh, you know, uh, researcher, teacher and institution builder, Professor Dr. G.S. Bajpai, the Vice Chancellor of RG and UL Punjab for uh, taking over as the Vice Chancellor of that institution, but also to have invited me today to speak to all of you. I also want to recognize the presence of Professor Dr. Naresh Kumar Vats, the Registrar of RGNUL, uh, deans of the faculties, heads of departments, faculty members, staff, um, students and parents and other distinguished guests present here today. Uh, what an extraordinary moment for all of you. I want to uh, congratulate each one of you because uh, you are you are epitomizing uh, this value of resilience uh, at a time when since March 2020, the entire world of education and the other worlds, including had simply crumbled and the opportunity to be, uh, you know, in any physical setting to pursue education. Uh, all of that was simply not there. You not only completed successfully your 12th standard examination, you remained hopeful about the future, demonstrated resilience and took the CLAT examination prepared for it and did well. And now here you are, uh, have joined one of the premier law schools in the country. Uh, you have hardly taken a break, hardly had a vacation, had little time to spend with friends and family. And you are back again, joining an institution that most of you probably have not visited physically. So I want to uh, you know, tell you that you have, uh, in a very short span of time in your life, you have seen so much that this challenge that has been uh, you know, imposed upon you uh, and the fact that you have overcome this challenge with so much of courage of conviction and resilience will keep you in good stead for the future. I am delighted and honored to have the opportunity to be here today at the orientation program of the students of the Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law. Uh, firstly, my congratulations to students uh, for being part of a very inspiring and prestigious law school. Uh, on this special occasion, I also want to take a moment to pay tribute to the leadership of Professor Bajpai. Uh, you may not have known uh, his work there because he has recently joined, but for those of us who have been in legal education as well as in research, Dr. Bajpai is one of those rare individuals who combines the extraordinary vision of an outstanding teacher, a prolific researcher, and an able administrator who also has enormous abilities to take people together, which is one of the most important attributes of a good vice chancellor. So I would like to say that you should consider yourself very fortunate to be part of an institution under his leadership, which will give you a chance to have a life altering transformation during your time there. Now, of course, RG annual is very special for me for another reason. Uh, as uh, Vice Chancellor of OP Jindal Global University, I must say that uh, uh, we have a fantastic group of RG annual alumni at Jindal. Believe it or not, nearly 15 of your outstanding graduates are associated with us as uh, faculty members and researchers 
at Jindal Global Law School. 15 of them, and that's no small number. Uh, and one of your uh, absolutely outstanding uh, graduate, uh, Professor Karan Latian, Karan had graduated from the first batch of the RGNUL, is one of our senior faculty members and associate professors and associate dean of Jindal Global Law School. I mentioned this to bring home the point that RGNUL has been at the forefront of legal education, not only contributing towards advancing legal education from the standpoint of corporate legal profession and other careers, including in litigation, but the fact that a substantial number of your graduates have chosen to be in academia reflects a very significant part of the vision of the institution. Of course, you have chosen to study law, and that's a very big decision. So I want to begin by saying congratulations to each one of you. Ralph Waldo Emerson said long ago, and I quote, there is no better way to exercise the imagination than the study of the law, unquote. In fact, I could not help but be inspired by the idea of synthesis of traditions that has influenced this great institution's vision, history, tradition, and background. In a world that has become increasingly globalized and interconnected, institutions that adopt an open, secretic approach are more likely to succeed and flourish. So the critical role of legal education in developing uh, equitable, progressive, liberal, and fair societies necessitates that legal institutions, law schools in particular, adopt such an approach. Law schools have a particularly important and challenging role to play in influencing the citizenship of the future. In addition, at a time when higher education institutions have to address competing demand for resources, it becomes imperative that the central focus of law schools remain on learning and educating young people like you to become leaders and change agents in change agents in all areas of society, particularly in addressing significant social, economic, developmental, and legal challenges we face in India today. The most important goal, I believe, of all institution building activities must be to inspire, encourage, enable our students not only to graduate into successful careers, but also to consistently strive to make a positive impact in societies around them. And that is exactly what RGNUL stands for today. This RGNUL stands as a steadfast example of how a committed institutional community of scholars and students can create deep and lasting change in societies around them. I also want to mention that in the Indian context, it is particularly crucial the institutions enable individuals to gain the opportunities and resources necessary to participate fully in the social, political, cultural, intellectual, and economic life of a nation. In the emerging world, student, teacher, and social creativity will be enhanced significantly by increasing the diverse profile of our higher education institutions. Bringing together students and faculty drawn from a range of disciplines Educational backgrounds, demographic profiles. I looked at the students who have joined at RGNL and I was amazed by the fact that it reflects a, a dynamic diversity of our nation, all of which was reflected strongly in the kind of students and the class that has joined in 2021. Cross cultural educational experiences have become necessary for preparing young generations of future work and life. Education institutions have an opportunity to emerge as microcosms of the real worlds that all of you students will inhabit. To the extent that the lived experience in law schools represents that reality, our students, I believe, will be adequately prepared for the complex nature of culture and creative life that we expect them to participate following their education. The RGNUL represents this very essence of a diverse ecosystem conducive to building well-rounded and able legal minds of our nation. Now, now the broad and forward-looking goals also necessitate that this institution strives further to address the challenges in educating young people today. And that's what you have come to RGNUL for. The vast challenges that Indian law schools in particular face today can only be addressed through the creation of strong institutions such as RGNUL that are committed to promoting academic freedom, excellence in teaching and learning, and creating institutional ecosystems that inspire innovation. Now, I would like to briefly reflect on the significance of legal education in your lives. 
Legal education is very critical to laying a robust foundation for any nation in ensuring its equitable distribution of justice and social prosperity. While it is instrumental in developing your legal knowledge and skills to prepare you for your future, one cannot underestimate the role it plays in molding you into responsible and law-abiding citizens of our nation. Your time at the law school, law school marks a very critical last mile stride in ensuring the completion of the desired educational experience. It trains you with the required competencies to fulfill your future goals and aspirations and also give you a launch pad to kickstart your careers and realize your dreams. Hence, it's important to take a moment to appreciate the value of upcoming years in not just molding you into becoming the leaders of the future, but also to becoming change makers for nation building. As we entered one of the most unprecedented crises of our times last year, the largest price we paid was human lives. Beyond the human cost, this pandemic has resulted in great demand for justice as well. In these times, legal education is perhaps one of the most powerful public policy tools that we have to raise skills and even imagine minds which can contribute to social change and development of a nation and the world. We have to recall the extraordinary contribution of some of those outstanding lawyers. Uh, in many ways, the Indian freedom movement had the privilege to have some of the most outstanding lawyers who laid the foundations of the modern Indian Republic. Mahatma Gandhi was a lawyer, Jawaharlal Nehru was a lawyer, Sadar Patel was a lawyer, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar was a lawyer. Pretty much we, these people laid the foundations of, uh, of Indian Republic. They not only were part of the freedom movement, but also were actively involved in creating the constitution. Now, being a lawyer gives one the privilege to promote the common good and bring justice to life. However, law is only as beautifully complex as human life. Therefore, studying law is very important to break down these complexities with critical thinking and also to evolve into responsible and ethical leaders. In fact, for all those students who are joining today, in the next few days and weeks and months, as you enter into the study of law, some of your deeply held beliefs will be challenged. Your biases and prejudices will be questioned and you will go through a very personal exercise of being challenged in a most fundamental manner. It is entirely possible that you have pretty much grown in, in your own home settings, family settings, community settings, believing many things that will be questioned. And for the first time, you will be exposed into ideas and perspectives that were never exposed to you before. And that is going to create significant changes in your mindsets. There will be dilemmas. You will question yourself whether you did the right thing to enter into the study of law at all. What kind of biases and prejudices that you have grown up with? Is it worthy to be challenged so fundamentally for you to reimagine your own self? With acts of injustice being one of the largest collateral damages during the pandemic and countries declaring legal systems as essential services, lawyers have become all the more important. Therefore, the choice you have made today to pursue a future in law is one that will give you the power to truly make a change in the world around us, where demand for justice will always grow. Before the pandemic, if it was said that we have nearly three crore cases pending in Indian courts, the post-pandemic situation led to over 4.5 crores of cases pending in India. This requires a dramatic reimagination of the dispute resolution mechanism. We need to reimagine the future of access to justice and no better time than now to be a lawyer and to be part of an effort. Hence, I congratulate you for having made this choice and you should be proud of yourself for having made it to one of the leading institutions of our nation. I am sure RGNUL with its focus on excellence will be the perfect platform for you to launch your future in the world of law and establish yourself as instruments of change. I want to quickly move into something that will give you some perspective of how do you be part of an effort to change the world through law? And this is one of my pet teams and I've always maintained that the thing that inspired me and a lot of young people around the world and in India to come into law was we earnestly believe that we can change the world through law. For all those students who are present here, 
who have come into law only with the view to make them make money i must say that there are better ways to make money and if your sole purpose is to make money please don't study law while you will of course have a good life and make a lot of money but the purpose of studying law simply cannot be to make money you could be an investment banker you could be in consultants you could be a, a, an entrepreneur you can create business you can do so many other things uh, to make money but to to enter into the study of law with the sole purpose of making large amounts of money is simply untenable and you will indeed be disappointed as you move in the direction of that so this is a moment a soul searching moment for you that if that is your only intention law is not a study choice or a career choice which you should make don't get me wrong you will have enough opportunities to make money as well so how do you change the world through law well first of all and i am going to give you 10 ways by which uh, you know lawyers are involved in changing the world through law first is the idea and principle of the rule of law in fact one of the most compelling aspects of the study of law is your own effort to understand the principle of the rule of law it is one of the most extraordinary principles that has you know strengthened democratic institutions but more importantly it has attached meaning and purpose to the life of law and in a country like india where the rule of law is constantly violated and many times undermined to be able to teach law and to be able to study law is one of the most difficult enterprises that you will enter into your views and perspectives will be challenged laws will get violated and violated with impunity how do you ensure that you retain the faith in the law at a time when there is all pervasive violations of law that's one of the most difficult dilemmas that we as law professors lawyers judges and of course law students face so you will be the guardians of those individuals who are involved in the protection of the rule of law the second idea of changing the world is the pursuit of seeking justice there is no greater responsibility than to pursue the idea of seeking justice numerous opportunities will be available for you to pursue justice and you will be called upon to provide leadership to pursue justice there is no greater way to inspire yourself and inspire the community at large than being involved in the project of pursuing and seeking justice and that is one way by which you will be involved in changing the world through law the third uh, is another powerful concept that uh, you know imbibes uh, legal education but also a constitutionalism which is about protecting equality through non discrimination uh, the idea of equality is so deeply embedded in our constitution in our civic and political culture that we need to constantly recognize that in all its forms and manifestations as young individuals in law as future lawyers and judges and those who are going to be connected with the law you will be constantly be reminded about the idea of equality and non discrimination that ought to be the values on the basis of which you will provide leadership to the world to change the world for the better fourth challenging unjust laws through democratic means in fact in all our lifetime we have seen that unjust laws have been there and there has been an effort including building civil society consciousness as well as uh, intellectual uh, you know collective engagement for challenging those unjust laws through democratic means challenging unjust unjust laws through democratic means is a very important responsibility that every enlightened citizen ought to have and lawyers in particular are no exception fifth protecting democracy through rights in fact one of the remarkable challenges that we face at the at, as we as we prepare to celebrate the 75th anniversary of our indian democracy is that to what extent we are able to protect democratic culture through recognition and enforcement of rights while the constitution of india has provided the normative framework of protecting rights it is the work of individual lawyers and judges and those who are connected with law day in and day out including law professors and law students 
who ought to be responsible for that effort to protect democracy through rights. You will be part of that effort. And that is another way by which you will be helping change the world for better through law. Sixth is something that many of you will be part of, which is empowering institutions that will render justice. You will be looking at a number of institutions which you will be part of, not just courts, but also media, uh, commissions, and other bodies, non-governmental organizations, intergovernmental organizations, think tanks, research institutions, all of them are involved in some sort of effort to render justice. Your job as a lawyer may be to empower these institutions so that they can fulfill their responsibility to render justice. Seven, to be an advocate for social causes. To be an advocate for social causes is absolutely essential. Many a time you will be asked upon to or called upon to be part of social causes that may not necessarily be immediately beneficial. You will be called upon to provide leadership. You will be called upon to recognize that you are fighting for those causes which are difficult and complex. You will be called upon to speak truth to power and that is a part of an effort to be a lawyer as well. So being an advocate for social causes comes with the terrain. You will make many people unhappy and at times even your family members for you to take those positions that may seem unpopular, but that was essential for promoting the vision of a social advocate and to contribute to social causes. Eight, to promote civil society activism for public interest. In fact, this is one of the remarkable aspects of democratic societies where even when governments, regardless of whichever political party in power, state or central, we ought to recognize that the civil society consciousness that is built around promoting public interest, lawyers have a very big role to play. Lawyers are expected to not only understand law, but also to interpret law and to recognize that the process of interpretation should advance the cause of public interest. That means to galvanize social consciousness through civil society activism and even recognize that approaching courts of law for adjudicatory process should also advance the cause of public interest. Nine, which is about dispute resolution through law. Don't get me wrong. Law provides enough opportunities for you to do so many different things, and I'll come back to it in a moment. You could be part of a range of opportunities in the field of law, but you also should remember that the heart of the effort is to, is to solve disputes and create opportunities for solving those disputes through different mechanisms, different processes, and different procedures. Last which is about removing social injustices in changing the law. A lot of people who came before you, including since the uh, independence movement, but also post-independent movement, have been involved in removing social injustices by changing the law. Many a time, our courts have been somewhat reluctant and at times even indifferent about these causes. It is the role of the lawyers and those social advocates who raised the consciousness and the conscience of the nation, which allowed them to do what they did. In fact, this idea of raising the consciousness is so critical, and I cannot do anything better than quote none other than Barack Obama, who was himself a law professor, later became the president. And he said, and I quote, the study of law can be disappointing at times, a matter of applying narrow rules and arcane procedure to an uncooperative -co reality. He uses the word to a matter of applying narrow rules and arcane procedures to an uncooperative reality, a sort of glorified accounting that serves to regulate the affairs of those who have power. And that all too often seeks to explain to those who do not the ultimate wisdom and justness of their condition. But that's not all the law is. The law is also memory. The law also records a long-running conversation, a nation arguing with its conscience, unquote. That's what you should remember. Law is recording a long-running conversation, a nation arguing with its consciousness. 
Let me move to something that I'm sure many of you are thinking at the back of your mind as you think about your future. I am convinced that there is no better time in history than now to be able to pursue law. I say this with a full sense of responsibility that law in many ways brings together the entire human consciousness, but also to recognize the future changes that the world is going to change. Artificial intelligence and robotics and machine learning and a number of aspects of technological advancements are going to impact society at large. It is going to be the responsibility of law, lawyers and judges and others involved in law to better understand and appreciate the implications of these on the human life and to recognize the importance of protecting values such as privacy, ethics, integrity along the way as we embrace these new technologies. The changing dimensions of the world of technology is going to impact our human life and it is going to be the responsibility of law as a social institution to protect these values that we steadfastly hold for the future. I also believe that it is going to be lawyers who are going to protect societies from authoritarian and other forms of uh, undemocratic traditions that might creep into any society. Lawyers are expected to be conscious keepers of society. They are going to be speaking truth to power, but also involved in building and establishing and evolving societies that are going to respect the rule of law. As I end my speech, I want to share with you three sets of thoughts that I believe may be useful for you as you embark on a new journey of pursuing a higher degree. I hope that some of these thoughts may help you and motivate you to maintain perspective during your academic journey as a lawyer. First, I want to share with you the concept of Ubuntu. Ubuntu essentially means and I quote, I am what I am because of who we all are, unquote. The word Ubuntu has its origins in one of the Bantu dialects of Africa. It is a traditional African philosophy that provides us an understanding of ourselves in relation with the world. According to Ubuntu, there exists a common, between, a common bond between us all, and it is through this bond through our interaction with our fellow human beings that we discover our own human qualities, unquote. Or as the Zulus would say, and I quote, that a person is a person through other persons. We affirm our humanity when we acknowledge that of others, unquote. The South African Nobel laureate Archbishop Desmond Tutu describes Ubuntu as follows, and I quote, it is the essence of being human. It speaks of the fact that my humanity is caught up and is inextricably bound up in yours. I am human because I belong. It speaks about wholeness. It speaks about compassion. A person with Ubuntu is welcoming, hospitable, warm and generous, willing to share. Such people are open and available to others, willing to be vulnerable, affirming of others, do not feel threatened that others are able and good for they have a proper self-assurance that comes from knowing that they belong to a greater whole. They know that they are diminished when others are humiliated, diminished when others are oppressed, diminished when others are treated as if they were less than who they are. The quality of Ubuntu gives people resilience, enabling them to survive and emerge still human despite all efforts to dehumanize them, unquote. So whatever you do henceforth, as you enter the portals of law school, always remember that small acts of courage, kindness, empathy, and courtesies of the heart will make a great difference to those around you. Success is most often not meaningfully measured in more conventional notions of status, titles, and wealth, but in these ordinary acts of humanity. All right, let me move to the second set of thoughts I want to share with you, which happens to be 10 pillars of encouragement that I have found valuable in my own life. And they're very simple, and there's no better time 
to be reminded about you of these values as you enter a legal education framework. First, work hard. Whatever you set out to do, give it all your heart and spirit. There are no shortcuts and don't believe anybody who says there are. Work hard and you will be able to fulfill your dreams and aspirations. Second, be honest. It is a difficult attribute to develop in this world. It is difficult to live an honest life and does not always pay in the short run. But if you remain honest and are able to overcome the life's challenges, you will end up being a far more happier person in the years to come. Third, think big. It's, an, it's important to think big. It's important to dream about big ideas. Those are the ideas that will shape the future of the world around you. In fact, the fact that you are receiving a privileged education at RGNUL, where a lot of young people around the world are simply having no opportunity to be educated comes with responsibility. UNESCO estimates that 1.5 billion young people have been removed out of education due to COVID-19. Imagine you and I, how privileged we are. Recognize your privilege and it comes with responsibility and think big and think big about ideas that can transform the future. Four, be forgiving. As you live your life, you will face many challenges, including challenges in your law school experience, including from people you trust. It's important to develop an inherent sense of reconciliation and forgiveness. This is the only way to challenge the inherent sense of violence that has engulfed human uh, consciousness and remain in that perspective to be forgiving. Five, be grateful. Something that I want to tell to all of you. So many things have come to your life and my life, not necessarily because we deserve it. It's important to remain grateful. Be grateful to parents, friends, family members, relatives, teachers, mentors, fellow citizens every day for the many things that have come our way, but we do not necessarily deserve. Remind yourself not to adopt a misplaced and false sense of entitlement that will undermine your ability to grow and effect change. Six, see change. Seeking change and transformation in everything you do is important. You need to challenge the status quo and constantly strive to be part of efforts to seek positive change and transformation in the world. Questioning and challenging status quo through democratic means is part of the responsibility of any educated individual and lawyers have a greater responsibility. Seven, stay focused. When you commence your education as law students at RGUNUL, you will experience varied cultural and other five types of orientations. While for the most part, this institutional life offers rich opportunities for self-development and career advancement. And you will find very, very many opportunities that will be given to you. But you will also find opportunities that will promote distractions, including petty gossip, counterproductive social interactions, and wasteful expedition of precious time. It's important that you stay focused on the task at hand and persist in your efforts. Eight, develop positivity. It is difficult to develop positivity because we are so deeply affected by our environment that it comes with all types of challenges. Find your own way to develop a sense of positivity and positive engagement. Avoid negativity. That's the ninth point. You need to make a conscious effort to avoid negative interactions. Find your own way to stay focused and to be part of the big picture. And the last is be trustworthy. The challenge of distrust is almost all pervasive in institutions today, in human life and social interaction. Begin to trust and be trustworthy. Develop trustworthiness even when you are betrayed as that will give you a good conscience. The third set of thoughts are something deeply inspiring for me personally, and I would like to recall one of the most inspiring sets of phrases that I've ever read in my life. Nearly 50 years ago, in the year 1968, these words were written by a 19-year-old second-year student at Harvard College, Kent M. Keith. 
Kent was deeply inspired by the need to promote leadership in the student council and to build the next generation of student leaders. And I know that there will be students who are here who will end up becoming part of the student council at RGNUL. There is no better set of phrases than this, which Kent Keith wrote in 1968. He was communicating to young people of his generation, and that became a legendary set of phrases that was quoted around the world. Kent Data became a Rhodes Scholar and pursued degrees from Oxford, Harvard, and the University of Hawaii. These phrases you know, went on to become what is known as the paradoxical commandments of Dr. Kent M. Keith. And I'm going to read this for you. And it goes like this. People are illogical, unreasonable, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The big men and women with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest men and women with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. People favor underdogs but follow only top dogs. Fight for a few underdogs anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. People really need help but may attack you if you do help them. Help people anyway. Give the world the best you have and you will get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have anyway. So I would like to conclude by saying that as you step into your academic journeys, focus on the importance of the future. Let us not forget our past and present, particularly the gravity of challenges in receiving justice that we're facing humanity even before the pandemic continues to bother us. The world at large is grappling with issues that range from refugee crisis to deep-rooted poverty, to exacerbating inequality, to increasing acts of crime and abuse of power, and many other socioeconomic legal menaces. We also have the looming threat of climate change and also the tragedy of international conflicts in our neighboring societies, including in Afghanistan. These issues have become more challenging when one notes the systemic occurrences of these events, posing systemic disadvantages to large numbers of people around the world. As students who will have the opportunity to study in one of the most prestigious law schools of India, you will have the privilege of becoming the flag bearers of change and justice in India and even around the world. So make the best of your time here, for it is this time that will lay the very foundation of years to come ahead in your life. I wish all of you the very best of luck for your journey ahead at RGNUL Punjab. Congratulations and my very best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rajkumar. Actually, we are all mesmerized. But the fact that uh, you have brought uh, certain insights which are so fundamental and not only fundamental but uh, you quoted certain things and you mentioned certain things which are extremely fundamental and you are telling them at a stage when the students are at their very formative year. I'm, I'm sure that they are going to have them imprinted already on their minds so really, thank, I'm thankful that uh, you brought a set of values which are so integral to the ethical developments of the student at these places. Because you are right that uh, uh, law schools do provide all the legal education and everything. But that ethical and that value framework is something which is so important and it is so lasting that the students at the very early age, they are really in a state of confusion, finding their ways, variety of experience. We all work in a law school and we know the ambience and the atmosphere at times become so confusing for them where to go. So you have really, you know, uh, brought very useful insights. I'm sure even the faculty members would have been benefited by your mesmerizing talk. 
and when i do not find any other way to you know appreciate and acknowledge i always say the same thing that uh, now the world is divided into two parts the students who those who have heard professor rajkumar and those who have not heard <laughs> really tremendous terrific i would say and uh, i'm sure both the things the last part of your talk was so fundamental that uh, i really do not need to work any hard any longer because uh, that would set a sort of a very important path for them to move ahead in their uh, career and coming from you who have seen the world from very close distance because uh, uh, the students who are listening at the moment uh, they may not be knowing to sir rajkumar in that sense but he is one person whom i am personally very you know i always look up because he has brought a drastical change in the way the law schools are functioning the way the law schools are organized the way the legal education should flourish so a lot of contribution very seminal contribution he has made to the legal education in this country and law school at jindal global university has become a kind of model and very aggressively and the kind of experiences and innovations they are making they are definitely very important uh, you know ideas to be adopted by other law school and i am looking forward and expecting that uh, rgnul will will have a very useful partnership with the, the law school at jindal and the innovations that you are carrying out should be should be adopted should be followed by other law school including rgnul we have already initiated certain things which are little you know unconventional uh, as i said uh, because uh, in our last faculty meeting we have floated the idea that uh, i am no longer to sort of follow one teacher one subject one classroom policy let let other teachers let suppose there is a principal teacher let there be interdisciplinary teachers and uh, having different kinds of perspective and experience should come to your classes this thing we are following so i'm really looking forward to sir rajkumar's involvement more and more not not only up to this level but beyond and i'm sure that his insights at different places at on different occasion would again guide this university very well and for today really thank you you made the day actually for many students i'm sure that uh, there there any student wish to speak i would say any speaker if you have any any feedback achal saurav anybody would like to you know absolutely speak? absolutely dr vachbhai i will say one more thing that uh, even though uh, i have been part of this event at rgnul i would like you not to count this as my real uh, visit i would like to come to your campus and spend oh. time with you and the faculty and the students i can understand if you are physically here you would change the world <laughs> really really i i i am very positive any student wish to see speaker today you have to speak up anybody wish to speak lot of students do you have an opportunity you can at least appear on the screen leave your hesitation behind i am not a very formal person anybody has to say anything any good morning sir yes good morning good morning good morning sir it is an honor to be a part of this session because RGNUL is evidently it is a really um, like it is a prestigious institution, and uh, being a part of this session is actually a great part. Like a okay, start to the beginning of the day, and the golden words, the orumed words, all the terminologies that we are being introduced to, and the great personalities we are looking forward to meeting. It is really a thrilling experience for all of us. so are you are you impacted in the same manner as i got impacted by professor raj talked today <laughs> what he said is remarkable you know how do you look at that sir raj well firstly <laughs> firstly beginning with uh, the two uh, speakers that uh, spoke in the beginning yeah your mic is has some problem And so raj said, i think you mean you, you may have to unmute yourself yeah yes. hello am um, yeah, i yeah. audible now yeah, yeah now we can, now we can hear you yeah yeah so firstly we we were introduced to one of the finest pillars of the democracy judiciary and um, two great people who uh, who been at the part of the legal um, vote uh, sorry the legal fraternity of india 
and especially one of the great academicians of India, Rajkumar sir. And we are actually enlightened by their words because it was a long time after we have actually interacted with people of such great academic qualifications. And it is actually a great opportunity for all of us to be a part of this session. Anybody else? Any parent? Any parent? Actually, parents very are good, very, very good, Swaraj. Uh, I think it was very nice that uh, Dr. Vajpayee draw you out. So you have uh, <laughs> now created a wave. I'm sure so many else will are empowered by this act of courage. Actually, actually, Swaraj, you have done wonderful. I am, I am waiting for somebody else on the screen. Uh, yes, Charvi is there. Charlie. Uh, hello. Yes, Charlie. Yes, so, uh, this is Dia this side. Yes, Dibi, uh, yes, Dibi. Dia. Yeah, Dia. Yes, yeah, Dia. Yeah, please. So I, I really admire you a lot, the way you spoke and your accent, especially, and you know, all the things that you spoke. I am very enlightened and I would actually like to ask you something since you have seen the legal education, not only in India, but also of the world so closely. What do you feel has re revolutionized in India in comparison to the world in terms of legal education? And what do you think can be a path breaker in the education? And what do you, how do you think we can improve? Well, thank you very much, Dia, first of all, and once again, congratulations to you. Uh, Dia, I think the most important part of being uh, uh, studying law in India is that you are part of a society which is constantly struggling to establish a rule of law society. I mean, there's something to be said about being a, a law student, a lawyer, a judge here, because this is not a discipline where one can get disconnected every day we are constantly engaging with law sometimes for good reasons sometimes for not so good reasons so there's something to be said about that and we will quickly realize and as you will quickly realize that even within your family and community and society when people are going to say things you will immediately be wanting to respond because now you have become more enlightened you have got that knowledge and perspective and skill set that only the study of law can provide. And that's a unique thing about what you'll be studying in India. The second thing I think uh, is quite remarkable, and this is, a, uh, this is an area which is, uh, so if you look at most parts of the world, law even today remains graduate education, even in India as well. So, and we have, uh, Dr. Bachpai, you know this, many of us in the education world have been debating and discussing about whether high school leavers should be introduced to law so early on or whether one should do law like how Dr. Bajpayee or many others or including uh, people like me who would have ended up studying law at the master's level or PhD level or graduate level. But one thing I am convinced, which is that regardless of whatever stage of law you come in, if you are, your imagination uh, can be fired and you can be inspired to pursue the study of law in the manner that a good institution can do, you will be able to elevate the consciousness of the society at large. And that is why uh, studying law is very different from studying business or accounting or anything else. You are part of, a, uh, of an effort to build a new social and political order. Even though you may be a corporate lawyer or a trade lawyer or an investment lawyer or an IP lawyer or a human rights lawyer, so that's another extraordinary thing that you will experience. And the last thing I will say is that uh, uh, one of the things that law will do and you will experience that is it will constantly question your deeply held beliefs. And that is, a prof that is, that is one of the remarkable aspects of law because I mean, I, when, I, uh, when I was introduced to law, never before I had argued with my own father as much as I did when I started studying law. Uh, because that's part of an effort. But then one of the things you also learn from that is you need to maintain humility as you learn law, because it is an it is the potential problem that many lawyers tend to face that they end up thinking that they know everything. And so you need to maintain that humility, which will not only enable you to learn law, but also articulate law in a most effective manner. 
I could not agree more with you, sir. Especially the last part that you mentioned about argue, arguing with your father. I do that almost every day, and even sometimes with my relatives. But uh, like coming from conservative backgrounds, at times when I look look up to uh, look up at people like you, like Sir um, Arjun Sikri, like Sir Jeet Malani, like Sir Bats, and like Sir. But by I am very very sure that our future is in good hands, and we are going we are going to be molded into the into the best shapes we can get into. And I just hope we have a lot to learn from you. And really good to see you, sir. Really good. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, dear. Thank you for this is a very uh, you know the situational feedback I tried because this was not a very unplanned thing. So. Even last because I know he is getting late and uh, any 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 parent would like to come on this. No, no problem, Dr. Vajpayee. I am happy no, to be around. No, it's so good to see all these no, students. Because see, this is a, a very different type of way that we are trying to know and hear the voices. Because they are, your voice is very important for us. I always take it very seriously. So any other student has any feedback to make at this point? We have a long way to go. Charvi is there. Yes, Charvi, you are trying for some time to come on this. Is your turn now? Sir, sir. Actually, I was Good unable morning. to unmute myself. You, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Sir, so, I you just want to say that to mute. I love the way Sri <laughs> Rajkumar sir presented uh, you know, the whole argument. Like it was like if I am sitting in a courtroom and you are presenting me with points. And that too, very valid arguments, I would say, on a particular issue. So I enjoyed that style of yours. And moreover, I liked uh, the points you made were actually valid. So they were enlightening. So that's why I wanted to speak. I was writing in the chat box, but I couldn't unmute. But thank you very much, sir. It was a great pleasure. And I'm what I'm feeling today is that it's the first day of my college, and I've started to learn from all perspectives. And it's my first lecture of. Uh, the legal career. Yes. Thank you. I be, in, in my own orientation, I always say college is the longest vacation one can ever have. <laughs> <laughs> you will have plenty of time to explore your ideas and yourself as he has rightly put. So, fine. so Charvi, I want to um, share with you something that uh, I know other students will also resonate because one of the things that law students tend to do and I know this because not only we have law students, but I interact with law students around the country and the world, but also uh, as a student in Delhi University, uh, there is a natural tendency to question status quo, which we would like you to challenge status quo. But I think it's important for you to recognize and appreciate the need for having humility and adopting democratic engagement and processes rather than methods that are not necessarily conducive for an institution. So I'm going to read an amazing uh, quote from none other than Dr. Ambedkar, who, as you know, was the chairman of the drafting committee of the Constituent Assembly. And this was his last speech in the Constituent Assembly. Most people uh, could not imagine Dr. Ambedkar said this, but he did. So I'm going to quote this. And this is a case he made against Satyagraha, revolution, and the grammar of anarchy. And this is what he said. If we wish to maintain democracy, not merely in form, but also in fact, what must we do? The first thing in my judgment we must do is to hold fast to constitutional methods of ach achieving our social and economic objectives. It means we must abandon the bloody methods of revolution. It means that we must abandon the method of civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and satyagraha. When there was no way left for constitutional methods for achieving economic and social objectives, there was a great deal of justification for unconstitutional methods. But where constitutional methods are open, there can be no justification for these unconstitutional methods. These methods are nothing but the grammar of anarchy and the sooner they are abandoned, the better for us, unquote. So as you enter the portals of an academic institution, I want all of you to embrace this as you think about how you are going to challenge status quo 
and seek change. Great. So I guess uh, <coughs> we have, we have uh, several other things to come up. Uh, I again, once more, uh, you know, thanks to Sir Rajkumar for a very, very live and very, very, you know, relevant and very contemporary. First, the wonderful, he brings a lot of experience with him around the globe and he understands the values in law school and values in legal education, especially the student experience and expectations. Unfortunately, law schools are not very closely following the student expectations and not trying to factor those expectations in their policy framework, in their execution. And that is why there are a lot of issues in law schools. And therefore, I always feel the students are the partners in the entire you know, designing of the curriculum and all other things. And there is a need to break certain conventions, in fact, in order to really fulfill these expectations. Because students are very genuinely there aware. And that awareness needs to be factored and properly utilized in order to make the law school more and more dynamic and living rather than constant and slow. So, so there I feel that uh, this is uh, you know, uh, exposition was very, very relevant today and probably you would like to listen again and again. It is already there on YouTube. Uh, please listen it again. So over to my colleague, Brinda. Thank you, sir. So now we hand over uh, the platform to our registrar, Professor Dr. Naresh Kumar Watts, to kindly extend the vote of thanks for our gathering. Thanks, sir. A very warm good morning to all the parents, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, boys and the girls. It gives me immense pleasure to pass on my heartfelt gratitude to our honorable dignitaries, dear parents, the newest members of the team, our students, my fellow colleagues, our worthy vice chancellor for taking out time to have this dialogue of the knowledge today. I heartfelt thankful to our honorable Mr. Justice Arjan Sikri, sir, former Judge Supreme Court of India, for taking out his valuable time to interact with the students and for valuable advice that have passed on all of us. I also thank to honorable Mr. Mahesh Zitmalani, Member of Parliament, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, for inspiring work that he has shared with our students, and especially for sharing his experience, which will encourage our students to learn the nuances of this profession. I also thankful to our uh, professor, Dr. Rajkumar, sir, Vice Chancellor, Jindal Global Law University, Sonipat, his wonderful tips, remarkable uh, the guidance to the students, the budding liars, and his expertise of the teaching and the research across the world, I shall say, and how the way he has brought up this Jindal Global Law Institute, Institute as a remarkable institution. I'm sure we all have been enriched with the knowledge and the wisdom and the experience that have been shared today on behalf of Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law Fraternity. I thank all parents for becoming the part of Rajiv Gandhi National University family. I thank our new mates, our students who will be helpful in shaping the future of the Indian society as the guidance given by Professor C. Raj Kumar, valuable guidance has given. I also thankful our Vice Chancellor, Professor G. S. Bajpayee for being a pillar of strength, visionary, and for his enthusiasm with which he leads the team. I also thank my colleagues for all the efforts they have invested in all aspects of the university development and the academic development. I thank my all members of the administration and the sporting staff for being my strength. All the best to the students for their future career and your 
I pray to the Almighty God for their good health and the success in their life. Jai Hind, Vande Matram. Thank you. 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 So with this, I think we close and uh, uh, this session. We are entering directly into the second session now. Is there any announcement you have? Or we have to just. Uh, we can build start with the virtual tour. Just name, no, not virtual. What is scheduled? So uh, I think uh, yes. Dear friends and their parents, we stay on for another one hour because this was a talk, a session which was purely devoted <clears throat> to enlighten you about the change in legal profession and legal education coming from uh, some distinguished dignitaries. Now, this is our internal session where uh, we would be talking essentially about uh, two things. First, We'll have a campus tour, virtual campus tour. Uh, the idea of this tour is to make you feel as to how the university looks like, because there is no other way at the moment to, with us to have it experienced physically. Therefore, this small tour will give you an idea of the university uh, for a couple of minutes. And then, friends, after the campus tour, I would be essentially talking to you some practical guidance, which would enable you to, you know, have your studies conducted, executed properly. And also, after that, some, some of my colleagues will also join to tell you about some very, very important, uh, you know, crucial issues about your uh, student affairs, student facilities, which you can access online, and how can you make most of it, as we have seen. So my request would be that you please be with us uh, uh, for this campus tour. I'm sure the parents are also there. Can I see any anyone anyone from the parent side to say just hello to me, just to convince me that uh, you are listening to me? Yes. I feel like greeting sometimes. You know. I, I love greetings, even by others to me. Yeah, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. Yes, 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 one and all present here today. You are, the... you are calling from which place? Just let me know that also. I'm from Jalandhar, sir. Jalandhar, you are from Punjab, sir. Great. Yes, yes. I'm the mother of uh, Dia Vega. She's uh, just sitting yes. beside me. And uh, uh, sir, a sincere thanks to all of you. I mean, especially the university fraternity. Uh, for uh, this orientation program, the efforts that has been made today from the side of the university. And uh, only thing I would like to say that I personally want, and maybe I think all parents, they would like to, uh, uh, you know this, uh, like my child, she is uh, in the very first year. So I would like that these five years journey with RG, uh, National Law University, UL. yeah, yes. RGNUL. It should be a an unforgettable journey, and also, I personally feel that we want some change in the country, and this is my sincere request to uh, VC sir, to you, and all the members of the university, all the teachers, all the faculty members. That I personally want, and I, without asking any parent. Any other people, I my I want I need I think that everybody wants some change in the country, and so these are my sincere requests to all of you to uh, you know kindly guide the students, kindly yes. polish them to you know be the change, the change we want in the country. This uh, is my sincere request to you. So I think I have not yet started. I have to say something. 
और अभी आप थैंक्स मत कहें थैंक्स मैं आखिर में सुनूंगा ओके थैंक्स का मतलब ये होता है कि आप मुझसे कह रहे हैं कि बंद करो पेरेंट्स बहुत से आ गए मुझे बड़ा अच्छा लग रहा है स्क्रीन पे आपको देख के आप आई वांट टू एश्योर यू दैट योर वर्ड्स आर वेरी गुड हैंड एंड यू विल सी द चेंज विद इन सिक्स मंथ I always felt when they go to the uh, campus. So initial first month, two months, they will continue to call you over phone. What is happening? And you will also call that what has happened. Better breakfast, you are not eating lunch, you are not eating. Whether you ate enough, whether the hostel food is good or not. Uske baad ab chhe mahine baad ab sunne phone dekhi uke kya bhi in class mein busy hai baad mein baat karna. And after another eight months, they will not pick up your phone. They will contact you only when their ATM balance gets deficient. They will ask for money. I am telling you, the students do not want to go back to their uh, places even in vacation. This is the magic we intend to create. In other words, the involvement of the student will become in such a way, in such a manner, where they become part and parcel of the life and environment here. Unfortunately, we are into a very Difficult uh, stage at the moment, but we are trying our level best to ensure that what can be done and when we can open and all those things. But until then, when it until then, we also have very interesting and very systematic plans to make most of your time, which would be very productively utilized, and you will never find that you are alone or you are aloof as far as your studies are concerned. Our teachers would be in a constant touch with you. Will be calling you up, and we have a system. You can call me up if you want to talk to me. I may be busy at times. I may not be able to talk to you immediately. But if you have sent me an email, I will reply you. If you call me, I will talk to you. Our parents. I want to just emphasize this particular thing. Mostly, the students are kept in the center that this program is. I say the parents are very important because. teacher and parents are two very important pillars for the career growth and building of this and please be very frank with us if there is any problem we will always talk we will work out the solutions to your satisfaction i am not a great votary of those conventional things and rigidities which would come in the way of the uh, you know formation and shaping of the career of these students you will never find me you know you know taking back seat on that because this doesn't happen i i am i am for 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 the full fullest you know for possible growth of the you know students career and their personality so all your uh, things will be definitely taken care of and for sure that i'd be talking to you parents i want to ensure please share your numbers with us if you have not because the students sometimes would give incorrect numbers to us they do not want after one year us their parent to be contacted by us i want you to be very proactive you know you are all working you will forget that they, they are in rg and you lose no need to please be watchful now student would be little upset i'm saying watchful doesn't mean that you need to regulate or monitor be aware how your ward is doing whether they are attending the classes whether, even at places at this time i my i request you to please just check that they are attending the classes they are listening it's not that their computer is on and they are roaming around and talking here and there no let us let us invest some time and energy merely getting admitted to this university is not enough enough now the real process starts now and we have no other thing to do except the students are in the center of this university my policy is very clear everything revolves around the student so therefore we have made a lot of change in our curriculum in the recent past we have we are trying to make it more and more contemporary and and in a manner so that their future careers are assisted and you know they are influenced in a manner so that they have a lot of opportunities but this is the time to learn and time to imbibe five year integrated course is a very long long period you will see the transformation in the personality of the student at once and there i need your help and support because my way of working is simply attending classes is not enough we need to look at as to whether the student is getting benefited by that class or not 
So I think you are the first check, you are the, at the moment in this situation, since the students are not located on the campus, they are located at their places, means they are living with you. So please, uh, please, I assure you that you will get all the response from the university. We have uh, uh, DSW, my colleague, Professor Pawar, who looks uh, looks at the student affairs and uh, he is the person responsible. So we, we have a system to take care of every grievance that you have. I'll, I'll be rolling out all these things in a systematic manner in the next couple of minutes. But I'm just trying to break this mono, monotonous conversation, one-sided, if you're not there. I want all of you to be involved. So I also invite any other parents just to say anything. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of parents are here. Kisi ko bhi agar kuch kehna ho, jo bhi bhasha aap bolna chahe, hum log kaafi bhasha hain jahanne lage hain. This, this, Sir, really? time, this batch is represented by as many as 24 states. The students from 24 states are coming and I'm very happy to share one more important thing which is brought to me. This time the ratio is very interesting. Uh, out of 179 students admitted to this batch, male are 87 and female are 92. Males are in minority, females are in majority. All powers to women. Great. I'm very happy to see this is the country is really marching in the right direction. And I find particularly in law, the girls are doing very well. It's not that the boys are not doing, but I'm, I'm very happy to see this development looking at the, the entire country and the way the things are moving and as many as 24 states are represented. It's a, it's a hugely diverse community. Therefore, there is a fabulous opportunity for all of you to learn, imbibe and grow. So, Mr. Call, do you want to say something? Yes. Sir, really very, very reassuring words for all parents here, I think. Because uh, uh, like uh, we are sending our words whenever that happens, when we have the uh, campuses are kind of offline. So they attend the classes. Actually, they are very eager. I tell you the kids here, they have in any case been for last one and a half years sitting at home studying for the 11th and 12th. They were actually looking forward to like uh, when the colleges can open and reopen and they can actually resume their classes there. And otherwise also very reassuring words. And uh, I think uh, अगर जिसको कहा जाए कि भाई 10 साल एक बच्चा स्कूल जाता है और 5 साल हम अपने बच्चे को इस कॉलेज में भेज रहे हैं तो कम से कम ये उनका आधा स्कूलिंग वाला एक लाइफ टाइम है जो वो आपके पास रहेंगे और मुझे लगता है जो यहां वो सीखेंगे और जो समझेंगे और जो आज मैं सुन रहा हूं ये इतने बड़े रीअश्योरिंग वर्ड्स हैं हमारे लिए कि हम कितने अच्छे इंसानों के पास भेज रहे हैं अपने बच्चों को नॉट ओनली यू आर गुड एकेडमिशियंस बट यू आर रियली रियली नाइस ह्यूमन बीइंग्स विद सच हाई आइडियल्स एंड थॉट्स तो ये हमारे लिए बहुत खुशनसीबी है और मैं मानता हूं एज अ पेरेंट हमारा भी एडमिशन हुआ है आरजी एनयूएल में अगर हम कहें इसको और हम भी आपके साथ अगले 5 साल के लिए लग रहा है लगभग हम आपके साथ आ गए हैं इस कॉलेज के अंदर तो रियली रियली ग्रेट ग्रेट मे गॉड ब्लेस ऑल ऑफ यू और एक अच्छी दिशा दिखाए और बच्चों के लिए एक अच्छा फ्यूचर साबित हो थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू रियली इंडेटेड रियली इंडेटेड और साहब आप लोगों की हौसला अफजाई एक बहुत बड़ी हम लोगों के लिए एक मोटिवेशन होती है जब भी कोई पेरेंट्स कोई क्योंकि क्या है हम एक ऐसी दुनिया में रह रहे हैं जहां क्रिटिसिज्म बहुत है जहां लोग जल्दी जल्दी संतुष्ट नहीं होते आप कुछ भी करें लेकिन आप यकीन माने कि जरा सा मोटिवेशन या कोई भी एक अच्छी हमारे पास आ, कोई कोई फीडबैक आता है इट बिकम्स वेरी वेरी मोटिवेशनल फॉर अस बिकॉज आप को मैं बताना चाह रहा हूँ विथ फैकल्टी इज डूइंग वेरी हार्ड दे आर ट्राइंग टू डू आई एम ट्राइंग टू मोटिवेट मैंने अभी यहाँ रिसेंटली यहाँ में आया हूँ मैं पहले नेशनल लॉ यूनिवर्सिटी दिल्ली में था वहां भी मैंने काफी काम किया है इसी तरह का और मुझे एक ये नया मैं यहां हूं आई एम वेरी थ्रिल टू सी दैट कि इस तरह से वी विल बी एबल टू डू और आप देखेंगे कि ये जो बच्चे हमारे पास फर्स्ट ईयर में आए हैं इनमें किस तरह से हम लोग चेंज आते हैं इनको किस तरह से शेप करते हैं आई एम ऑलरेडी ऑन ए पाथ टू ट्रांसफॉर्म लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स हियर और अब इस यूनिवर्सिटी में वी विल यू नो फैसिलिटेट द विजिट्स ऑफ लॉट ऑफ एक्सपर्ट्स लॉट ऑफ पीपल बस आपको यू हैव टू बी जस्ट अवेलेबल रेस्ट विल टेक केयर ऑफ वी विल इन्वॉल्व यू हियर द टीचिंग इज नॉट वन साइडेड इट इज अ वेरी पार्टिसिपेटरी प्रोसेस वेर वी आर आर पार्टनर्स इवन दैट्स व्हाई आई एम एड्रेसिंग पेरेंट्स आल्सो बिकॉज पेरेंट्स आर जनरली फॉरगॉटन डू 
you have a very great role to play which i would uh, you know you know show you in future that uh, you can you can impact them you can assist them you can guide them because there are lots of moments sometimes thodi si frustration bhi aati hai to aisa kuch nahi ek bahut achhi jagah hai aap hai aur aap dekhenge ki ye these things will unfold very gradually i those who have visited this university they will understand those who have not visited for them i i have something to show after that uh, we'll probably you know tell you some few more things about this university and uh, we will uh, because i have lot of things to introduce to you about the structure of this university the organization the bodies the ranking research mous internship placement courses academic program faculty campus tour library student services academic activity on all these things i'll be sharing but thoda sa main apna program zara sa change kiya because main to conversation mein believe karta hu dialogue and access we have not created a system or a regime which is inaccessible i have i have two principles dialogue and access so my dialogue from my side my office is always open for students you can access me any time my registrar is available you can contact him my dsw dean student welfare they are also available so aap conversation kijiye baatcheet pe aapko because we are interested to make you because when you perform the universities rank goes up mere liye university ki rank hai your performance we see our achievements in your success if you are successful we are happy main hamesha kehta hu ki if you have uh, any grievance tell us but if you are happy about us tell others this is very important so so i now hand over uh, to my colleague uh, prinspreet is sitting here she is assistant professor in the university teaching economics uh, she will just uh, provide you a glimpse of the university aur aap dekhenge ki kitni shandar university hai aur aapka thoda thrill aur increase mai karna cha raha hu i can understand ki aap bahut jaldi aana cha rahe hain please believe us we will make all opportunities whatever is possible at any point of time kuch hum phases mein kuch we will work out something for you because i know you are confined but one thing is very clear it is no longer to be the same you were in the school and the school studies and teaching was on a different platform now you are in a very liberal and open world of a national law school where you will have ample opportunities to explore your own ideas in a very very productive and creative manner so i hand over now this uh, campus tour and it is right on your screen please be with us we'll resume soon we are already here actually
Great, so please uh, thank you so much for your attention. We are back again. I think, uh, I know it's a little atrocious to show you all these nice images to you while you are not being able to come to us. So initially I was apprehensive whether to show you this uh, video and these images or not. But then I thought that let's be hopeful. We have to be optimistic to be live. We have all we are all passing through a kind of uh, you know struggle, and uh, but but we will emerge as winner. I am very confident. Let's keep our spirit very high. I am telling you, this is the mantra. See, otherwise, if you start thinking negative, no, we can't go. This is so there, there would be no sort of uh, outcome of this. So now I'm making a very small presentation to let you know about a lot of other things. I hope parents are continue to be there. I'm, I'm very happy about. So at any point of time, if you want to say something, just raise your hand and let me know. I'm not making it a very kind of a very ritualistic kind of, uh, it's a conversation again, as I'm saying. So, uh, so again, I'm showing you a small uh, presentation through which I'd be trying to uh, give you an idea about the university. Though you may have seen, you are very smart people. You must have seen the website. You have explored everything. So, <laughs> so that's okay. That's the life actually. So can we have now PPT? And in the meantime, we we'll talk. So, welcome again. The university actually is a, as you know, that uh, is an A grade university. And this is an interesting fact. This is the first ever national law university which has been accorded in NEC status, followed by which a lot of other national law universities have gone for NAC accreditation. Those who are new to understand this NAC, Thing I'll explain what is NAC, you know. So uh, this is the vision because the Rajkumar was also saying that uh, this is not merely we are not uh, education is not a commodity and we are not a consumer because vision is still a lot more different. We need to create researcher, administrator, lawyers, officers. You know, university the the the. the University is the governance of the university. So at the top, our visitor, visitor is invariably the sitting uh, the Supreme Court Chief Justice. Sometimes are sometimes the nominated ones. In in our case at the moment, Justice Honorable Justice uh, uh, Uday Umesh Lalit is the visitor of the university, and uh, you'll have opportunity to meet him when he visits the university next time. The, the, at, at the apex level, the university's chancellor, uh, who, is, who is always the sitting chief justice of uh, Punjab and Haryana High Courts in the present case, Honorable Mr. Justice Ravi Shankar Jha is, the, is our chancellor. And, uh, and then the university has a governing council that is the apex policy making body, which has the membership of uh, some very renowned people, including the chief justice, two sitting judges of the High Court, uh, Justice Jaswan Singh, Justice Rajan Gupta, and then you will also find the other people, uh, the Chief Secretary, uh, the Attorney General, uh, Advocate General, and then the Principal Secretary uh, Education, the Principal Secretary Finance, Chairman Bar Council, Chairman State Bar Council. You can see the governments and some very renowned academician, Professor Venkatarao, the former Vice Chancellor NLS, and Professor Ranveer Singh, former Vice Chancellor in New Delhi, and a lot of other people, and our own faculty. This is the apex. So all policy matters are referred to this. Executive Council is our uh, important premium uh, body uh, to take policy decision regarding uh, the university affairs. Again, it's chaired by the Vice Chancellor, and uh, the members are the, the secretary, uh, the Department of uh, Law, the Advocate Journal and all other members are there. You can see these things are available on the website also. The academic programs that the university run is the following programs we are doing at the moment. 
So we have a VLNB program. You are the student of that program. LLM, we have 40 students, PhD, LLD. And recently we have introduced, the parents can enroll in this program actually. <laughs> LLM executive program. If, if you want to study with your students in the same university, this is a wonderful opportunity. It is open to all. You need not to be a law graduate. I'm doing little marketing of the university at the moment, but please allow me to do so. You can you can you can enroll yourself to a LLM executive program, irrespective of your profession. You may be a banker, you may be a corporate uh, uh, fun functionary, or you may be a government officer. We are also doing a uh, postgraduate diploma in physics. And uh, recent initiatives, as I was mentioning in the morning, we have adopted interdisciplinary teaching. Law practicum, because the, the future lawyer should be oriented to the practical aspects of law teaching. So we'll invite lawyers and practitioners to teach these students. And you will find that uh, the student participation to research projects. So this is a very thrilling, uh, even being online, I'll soon write to you. If you are interested to assist any research project in the university, you will learn a lot. And mentorship program we have. This is a unique pedagogy and teaching methodology. That's why the law schools are unique. These methodologies are very rare to see in traditional law colleges. The details about these methodologies are available on the website under the title new initiatives. You can look at. We have 38 uh, faculty members in the university and uh, they will take care of your academics. So we have a interdisciplinary teaching where we have the professors, teachers of law, political science, sociology, economics, and we have junior research fellow. And this faculty composition is the key of this university. This is the hallmark of any institution. And through faculty, we build up the institution. And you'll find the faculty members are constantly engaged with the students. Uh, this, this is our core faculty. Uh, uh, so Professor Pawar and Professor Naresh, uh, both are the professors here. And uh, uh, Professor Anand is also the uh, DSW and the controller of examination. Examination is very important, so you need to contact him very often. Uh, Professor Naresh is the registrar, again, a very important functionary uh, whose contact is very important for this student. And then we have uh, Dr. Sharanjit. Are you there, Dr. Sharanjit? Can you put your uh, video on? Is it possible? Yes, sir, I'm there. Just a minute, sir. Okay. So we can hear. This is the voice. This is the live from Sharanjit. Say hello to your, your students. <laughs> Very good afternoon, sir. Yes, great. Great. Dr. Kamaljit, are you there? So Dr. Sharanjit is a criminal law teacher. Dr. Kamaljit. Warmly yes, welcome. Yes. Dr. Kamaljit teaches constitutional law and family law. She is hello, saying hello to all of you. And uh, they will be interacting with you very soon in your classes. We have uh, Dr. Tanya, English teacher, Dr. Vrindpeet Kaur, economics teacher, Dr. Rachna Sharma, uh, history teacher, Dr. Shweta, uh, teacher of political science. They are all very active faculty members. I'm very proud of having the colleagues like them. They are doing a lot of work and uh, they will be you know, assisting you in your academics uh, in a variety of ways. So uh, please uh, be be given to this understanding that the teachers who are teaching and those even those who are not teaching, you can contact any of them if you require. And again, we have Dr. Gaganpreet, Dr. Manoj, Dr. Jaslin, Dr. Renuka, their uh, subjects are written on the screen. So they are also uh, regularly going to be in touch with you for uh, the very subject uh, that uh, they will be teaching to you law subjects and within law we have around 50 subjects actually you will soon understand i think the online prospectus will help you to understand that law doesn't mean one subject law means corporate law business law ip corporate uh, environmental law tort law contract law so we have different teachers we also have dr Nandan, dr geetka dr geetka is a moot court coordinator also so moot if you are interested in mooting and dr avinandan is a a coordinator for legal aid uh, so i'm sure many of you would be interested uh, in getting in touch with them and uh, dr shiva and dr manpreet and then we have dr ivneet walia the criminal law teacher dr sangeeta international law teacher dr gurneet criminal law teacher again and uh, he's also going to teach you in legal method class 
Dr. Siddharth, constitutional law teacher, and we have Dr. Lakhvinder, administrative law, Dr. Jaswinder, again, international public law and uh, human rights, Dr. Sachin, Dr. Shruti, Goyal, criminal law teacher. So I think the profile of all these teachers are available on the website. And Dr. Gurman Preet, ADR, Dr. Sukhvinder, core as a teacher of human rights, and Dr. Navleen, English teacher, Dr. Jasmine, economics teacher, uh, a detailed profile is available. They're all very dynamic, and they have proved their metal and uh, brilliance in all these years. In the morning when uh, uh, Dr. Rajkumar was mentioning the excellence, they are all the contributors to the excellence that this university has achieved in the last 10 years or so. And then we have Dr. Saurav, Dr. Lovepi, Dr. Uh, Ms. Ananya, and uh, Mr. Rajat. They are also, you know, uh, the part of various committees. This university also has a number of committees through which we are functioning. I'll soon introduce some of those things to you. And uh, uh, Ms. Sonika and Pranita. We have some guest faculty who are the advocate and the senior people. We also have a system of visiting faculty. We are adding more visiting faculty very soon. These are some senior members who are the part of uh, the faculty board of this university. Uh, we have a system of inviting legal luminaries uh, practicing and retired. Uh, so they, they, they always give a lot of guidance to these students. This university is also, you know, uh, uh, characterized by its uh, research centers. These research centers are very useful. Invariably, the students are the part of these centers guided by the faculty member. So you can choose any center you want to associate it with depending on your interest and you will have opportunity to work with it. The probably the only university, national law university in the country who has NCC or MIVI and we, you have the option of NCC and uh, 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 th this is a very unique uh, speciality in the university, those who are interested in health. NAC accreditation, A grade by the uh, by the NAC is a National Assessment and Accreditation Council under UGC, which rates the university on certain parameters. This university has uh, achieved that excellence in terms of uh, grade A, and that is the only first university to have received this credit. Uh, th this is the, also the NAC peer visit team, and this is the certificate of accreditation. You may ask that how this uh, the university can achieve it. You have to perform all and all in, in on different parameters. And the, as far as ranking is concerned, though the ranking has a lot of other parameters, but the university has been fairly very high in terms of ranking. NIF ranking is very important. This is the government ranking, basically. The Ministry of Education now, earlier HRD ministry, and the university figures in top 10 and top 15, but I'm telling you something. Uh, uh, this is going to be very soon changed. You'll find we have to work very hard to go up in this ladder. And there are other kinds of ranking, but law, law industry ranking, I think the NIF ranking, we are in top 10 slot. And in other ranking, CSR uh, ranking, we are at three. So these are the ranking. You can see yourself. Uh, I'm not surprised that this university got first rank as far as Swakshita campus ranking 2019. This is the government ranking. This is the cleanest, most cleanest campus, residential campus in the country. You can see, and all credit goes to the, the staff who is posted here. They are the gardeners, they are the housekeepers. They have done tremendously well to achieve this laurel for the university. MOUs, we have a lot of MOUs because we work and collaborate with a number of institutions. They are the national and international institutions who are partnering with us with respect to a variety of programs that we conduct on the campus. So you can yourself see some of these collaborations that we have. Now, this is the campus tour. Campus tour is again, you have seen the video, but uh, this is uh, the university, uh, you know, main, very most uh, preferred, most visited picture on the internet, I would say, you know, probably the, the iconic picture, I'm telling you. You can save this picture, 
you should be prompting on this picture all the time whenever you go. <laughs> you can be the proud member of uh, this community. And this is the most rega regality of this picture is phenomenal. You can yourself see. Do you agree? Okay. Yes, yes. You have to say yes when I say if you agree, you know. It's <laughs> sad with tongue in cheek. Beautiful, you know, ambience, flowering all around, you know. And this is the, as I said in the beginning, perhaps the most remarkable campus. I have seen almost all the campuses in the country, and uh, no campus can match. Uh, and the facility this is the first ever campus in the country which is which provides, you know, the air condition conditioned hostel to these students. I copied this idea when I was in NLU Delhi. They have become the first university to have provided their students air conditioned campus. This is the season in the university at the moment. We are seeing these visitors very often to the campus. Migratory words is a very regular feature. You can find peacock, you can find migratory words, you can find all kinds of. We are living in the nature actually. Complete. So uh, nice ambience, the administrative block on the top left. And perhaps we see Bangalow, I guess, no? Yes, and uh, that place is, you can see the view of administrative block and the sports ground. I'm telling you the sports facility is invariably lacking in most law schools. We are going to establish a sports center very soon. But our sports facility can give a tough time to any institution, you know. These are the boys hostels, you know. Our, uh, yes, these are the boys hostels named after uh, the freedom fighters and uh, the legendary historical figures of uh, the country. And a uh, lot of views. The only thing is campus is deserted without you. Oh, very good title. So boys hostel, Tagore, Girls Hostel, Prithima Hall, and very nicely maintained hostel, I think. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Professor's residence, as good as Vice Chancellor's residence, very nice bungalows, assistant professor residences. And these are not, uh, you know, edited pictures. Please, student, please do consider me very seriously. These are the genuine pictures. You can verify, you can come sometime in one or two. This facility area is very interesting. I am telling you why. Again, I have not seen this kind of medical facility at any campus in the country. They have the you know, facility to admit these students. I do not want you to be admitted though, but we have ambulance, we have doctors, resident doctors. We have a, a pathology lab. I was surprised on my visit to see that a lot of preliminary tests are conducted in house only. Their samples are not sent outside. The parents would be very, very relaxed. ATM. So health facility, I think, remarkable. And the students will have, uh, there is a nurse and uh, there is a duty doctor and ambulance, testing labs, the wards, and even a, a small OT is also there. ATM facility, post office, shopping complex. We have uh, very good, uh, you know, these, uh, important uh, you know joints where you can uh, be there in the evening for your requirements gymnasium is again uh, probably the chest one every facility is there only the students are missing gymnasium is there this is the guest house of the industry this is very important place uh these students is where can you tell me what what they do Let's converse. Yeah, you can be loud. Sir, yeah. This is the place where all of our students, they're very enthusiastically conducting their functions like the pressure party or the farewell functions and all other occasions, the dance parties, the Halloween functions, all these functions they usually conduct and they organize their dinner parties also here in the student square. So this is one of the most happening places in the university, especially from the point of view of the students. I am sure you must be wanting yourself to be here. Say yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. We want to be physically present. And and uh, there is a mini open theater also. There is a this is a wonderful facility. We have created in keeping your demands and views and requirements in mind. So so this is a completely very student friendly you know facility. Open spaces are amazing for your uh, recreation, your activities. So there is a very rich cultural uh, where the student. Participation is amazing. Am I right, Yes, sir. Absolutely. So when you have seen this last, I think before the COVID. Absolutely, sir. Uh, right. Uh, little, little before. Uh, little, little, yeah, before uh, yes, sir. Great, great, great. We have had the functions. We have had the parties. We have had. Um, so uh, can we invite a group of a student at least, uh, not for classes initially, but to have some yes, performance? You know, and yes. just to be there. Yes, we, can have, yes. we can have some we can time. We have a small get together. Yes. Great. This is the academic block. Uh, academic block where the classes are there, classrooms are there, beautiful classrooms. I think this is the outside view. No? Yes. Woodcourt Hall. Uh, what have any specialty of this hall? So this is perhaps the one of the uh, <laughs> yeah. here in the Woodcourt Sandra. Many of the visitors they say that uh, Better than many of the high school and Supreme Court. Yes, yes. Real we are very enthusiastic about this to be used by you for your activities. This is a very happening. Uh, I also feel that this is perhaps one of the best. I have also not seen this kind of a very huge uh, sitting capacity. You know, I yes. think uh, probably more, more than, than 200. More than 200 students can be there. They can feel the real argument and the real ambience in the compound. This is the canteen. You know about. You the importance of the team, you know. In words, you know, a lot can happen over a cup of coffee. Administrative block where our offices are there, the star, vice master, DSW, controller of examination. This is the reception area. Is there any spirit? How it came into be? I think it's a Thought that we should uh, have the goddess of justice right at the entrance. No, great. Your your WhatsApp profile must change now. You know to incorporate some of these images. If anybody wants some of these images, uh, we can give you the images. You want strength? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would, I would accept all, all of them. You, all of you should change your DPS. You know, I, I'll visit some of your WhatsApp, you know, to, to make sure that you have changed your DP. <laughs> you know? the pictures are available. And we have we have these pictures available. We will be sent. Obviously, please note we have to send these pictures to these students. Yes. Uh -huh. You can you can create the wallpapers. Yeah, wallpapers? What, what are you saying? Somebody mentioned something. I said that uh, virtual uh, background. There are there are a lot of people who have already posted for photos of this college in our LinkedIn backgrounds. I have oh, to. And some of us have also done that. Uh, you please do that. Yes, huh? so you are... use that as background in virtual calls and meetings. And, and, and you know, other day I was talking senior students. So so you know they they don't call it RG anywhere. They call it Ragnol. <laughs> Ragnol is now the name that you should be associated with, you know. Ragnol. Nice, it sounds well. RGNUL is a tongue twister. To be honest, we have a group named Ragnol. Ragnol, very good, very good. I'm happy. I'm happy when the university. You. you are many so steps ahead of our imagination. <laughs> okay. so when the university posted the list of first list, so they have a number of all the students, the phone numbers. So I yeah, saved yeah. all their numbers and we created a group. So there are around 145 students in our WhatsApp group. I, I, I expect yes, this you know, imagination rules the world Napoleon says. So you are already you know, steps ahead. Great. I, I expect this kind of dynamism from you. So so I believe that uh, this is going to be very, very useful. Conference hall. We have a very you know good conference hall in the in the administrative block where uh, we have our meetings. Uh, we have a meeting boardroom also at the end to the vice chancellor office. Uh, nice place. And this is the vice chancellor residence. 
you know, generally, I, I come from a convention. I believe I am a believer of convention that the first year student should be welcome in the lodge of the vice chancellor residence. Do you agree? For a dinner or a lunch? Yes. Yes, please. So if I forget, uh, you should not forget to insist that whenever you are next to the, in the on the campus, we'll host you, I'll host you for a, for a lavish lunch or dinner. You know? Yes, sir, definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, you deserve it. Sir, we're so excited for offline yeah, campus. I, I, I'm, I'm actually counting your sacrifices. Huh. And I'll return you with interest. Yes, sir. Uh, you do. So that is so good, sir. sir. We do host you come inside. Yeah, yeah, you can. You'll come inside and have selfie. There are lots of things inside. I'm going to create a selfie stand before you come. No, sir. Right now, we want to see the hostel from inside. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll talk to you. You just uh, privately message uh, to my secretary. You'll arrange some visit. Well, I'll do something. I'm, Definitely. I'm I'll, I'll, I'll see that your enthusiasm does not subside. You know. I'll have you. I, so personally, in, in a group of five, ten people, sometime you can visit. Let let us know when you want to come. We'll not create a crowd because we have to be careful. Uh, but at the same time, I'll not restrict anybody. But but there should not be at once rush. So I think I'll carve out some scheme for you and inform. And depending on uh, the consent of your parent and everything, you can come and experience the campus. Auditorium again is a wonderful place. Please on that. Sir, this is again uh, the next happening place after the student square where uh, all our events, they are considered performances are showcased. Mm -hmm. And this is the place where the students exhibit their talent and we get to know uh, the talent that they possess apart from their academic capability. Very nice. All the convocations also take place. All convocations, uh, all the students sit here. This is the outer view on my left, and uh, again, uh, this is the inside view. Any faculty member needs to say anything who are, who, are, who are online? Actually, there are faculty members who are already there. Anybody wish to speak on Avinandan? Are you there? She's I'm checking whether my faculty members are there or not. Good afternoon, sir. We are doing in the background. Wonderful. There are, there are, sir. There are some faculty. Yes, yes. Sir. Sir, we, we just don't wish to, sir. Uh, the, the only thing that I wish to say right now is a student had asked that are they allowed to plug the flowers? No, they are not. There's a fine for that. <laughs> <laughs> That is the only thing, sir. But um, uh, we, you know, we are equally excited to meet them. Um, you know, uh, till now they were all part of the admission list. So we, we used to see these names. So now, um, Sangeeta and yeah. I, we are, we are looking after numbers, looking all the numbers pages. have been now stuff. converted into faces. Exactly, sir. Precisely. So it's yes, it's yes. very nice to to interact with them in this way, and we are uh, more than them. We are excited to meet them in person, sir. To get back yeah, to yeah. The classroom teaching. Yeah. Uh, so I also invite any other faculty members who are present over here uh, to make any comment. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. So I just welcome all the students and uh, a warm welcome to all the parents also being part of our community. God bless all and God bless our art genuine. Thank you, Jasmeet. Wonderful. So Yes, uh, very good afternoon to all. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and good afternoon to all the students. Um, uh, on behalf of all the teachers, we welcome you and we are really excited actually to see you here physically. Uh, it's the, I think we share the same feelings. We are as excited as you people are. All the very best to you and hope to see you very soon. Thank you. Wonderful. wonderful. So, uh... A lot of teachers have to, so they will come in between during this yes. presentation by the time. So now we are entering into a student service uh, sector, which is very important. So I'll take a small break and I hand over to, uh, I'm here very much here and you'll hear my comment off and on. But uh, this presentation is to be coordinated by Professor Anand Pawar, who is a professor of law here and also the uh, in charge of uh, student service.
foundation. So you have a lot of practical things to you know tell you in uh, through this presentation. And uh, in between the parents and students and faculty, feel free to comment and to ask if you have anything in mind. Do not uh, just be live and interesting for you. Right over to you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, this, though the most of the part has already been covered by the, the vice chancellor during this uh, course of interaction, but uh, and. Uh, uh, we also have uh, a few more days uh, where the orientation is scheduled. Mm -hmm. There are details of each and every session regarding the library, how to assess, what kind of books are there, how to get it uh, issued, how to return. All in detail would be discussed in uh, due course of time. But uh, just to give a glimpse of the library, this is the perhaps the largest single faculty uh, uh, library in this part of the country where we have all kinds of uh, books, reference books, textbook, and to inform the parents that uh, it's not that uh, necessarily you need to purchase the books. We have sufficient numbers of books in uh, soft copies and online as well as in hard copies. Uh, and uh, they can uh, borrow it from the university, uh, university library for the time being and they can return. They can make their notes by sitting there. And we also have uh, online books and we have provided the remote access to the students because uh, since the online classes are going on, so a student can access the SSC online and SSC, uh, SSC reader where all the books are available on different subjects, not only uh, relating to their own subjects, but other books of their own interest. They can go through and they can uh, just have a view of all these books uh, and they can prepare their notes while sitting at their home and while sitting in the, even if they are here uh, in the campus, while sitting in the uh, rooms of the hostels, they can prepare their notes. The access of uh, these SEC readers provides you the multiple kind of different books. We also have online database all because we know that uh, how much uh, kind of research is required to prepare your mood codes, your projects. We have Hain online, Lexis and the Lexis Nexus, SEC online, corporate law advisors, uh, Westlaw, Manupatra. And in addition to that, there are multiple kind of other uh, um, <coughs> journals also uh, dedicated to specific areas like criminal law, ADR, IPR, uh, banking laws, corporate laws. So uh, you name it and we will have it in our library, all such kind of online and offline books. OPEC is online public access catalog, which will be detailed, uh, information will be provided to you. Uh, there is no physical uh, issuing of the books. We have this uh, automated issue return uh, uh, system in the library. So you just need to put your uh, books there and your I cards. The, uh, initially, you need to just contact the library people so that uh, they can create your specific uh, identification cards and number. You also need to uh, have your own email ID uh, with the rgnl.ac.in so that whenever you are logging in for your classes, uh, or uh, for retu return and issue of the books or to access the online database or any any facility which is available in the university. You need to have your registration uh, with the portal as well as you need to register in the library and the IT sector, the IT people and the library people will help you out. And how to process it further, the detailed discussion will take place tomorrow when the sessions are already scheduled. So uh, these are all uh, the library which includes American Journal of International Law, Harvard Law Review, International Legal Materials, Digest, Encyclopedia, American Jurisprudence, Cox General Cases. So, or in addition to this, is uh, the Vice Chancellor has also taken this initiative that even if the books are not available, you just need to uh, mention the names of the book through the faculty members or directly to the uh, librarian. And uh, within a very short period of time, you will make available in the library. So we all should be thankful for taking this initiative that not only the books which are already available, in case if you find that there are certain books which are required, you can also uh, refer and you can submit your uh, books so that we can arrange in the library. Do, do we have librarian present at the moment? Yes. From, uh, Dr. Manoj. Dr. Dr. I'm here only. Good afternoon, Actually, sir, and uh, welcome to new members of our general family. I think uh, uh, Professor Pabar has already detailed about various databases as well as uh, books, ebooks which you are having. And uh, I assure all the students that whatever books you need, 
they are the library and we can make you provide those books which are not there i mean in a very short span of time and uh, okay. there will be a virtual tour of library also in the coming days where you will get more information we are also arranging uh, training in various databases for the benefit of all the students so that they can learn how to use those databases sir yeah so receive do, do we have harjinder also with yeah, dr harjinder dr harjinder harjinder ma'am are you there probably probably see uh, the students you uh, they all these library staff are very cooperative you can directly contact the numbers are already mentioned there and uh, have you all uh, received the schedule for tomorrow and after tomorrow where all these sessions will take place the students noted sir noted no sir No, sir. So, I think no, sir. I think today itself we will be sending you the library orientation session because I believe the library is going to be very very important. We have a remote uh, access system because you are in online mode, so the material would be very useful. So you can demand the material also, though we will supply it in our ERP already. The course material is uploaded, but if you have any particular requirement from the library, I'm sure they will respond you within no time. we have a very quick system to respond so i assure you all these things so library session is scheduled uh, tomorrow afternoon it is there so please do attend that because thinking uh, back that you are into online mode so library is a very important instrumentality available to you to take care of your studies and all oh, yes just to just to give you the brief of uh, the session also i just uh, yes. everybody is there so tomorrow in the morning we have yes. first session uh, introduction with regard to the uh, minor and minor minor major scheme of uh, your uh, uh, how this minor major scheme takes place uh, subject allocations and then introduction of uh, course scheme uh, of your integrated five years course uh, that will be the the program the program schedule is on the 31st yeah 31st 31st yeah 31st That's what I am saying. The thirty-first and register sir. Yes, so Jana sir, we have to immediately, you know, get it, uh, you know, communicated uh, to the students immediately. You know, ask somebody to immediately share. So first three session so, would be the minor scheme. Then uh, sir, the course. Sir, we have already we communicated, sir. We, we have communicated, communicated first, sir. Yes, that's what I. Yeah, it's there. It's there. It's so there. it will be there. You check it, please. Yeah? You just check it you and just then check it. there will be a virtual tour of library on the how to access the library and online database everything would be there not only not only about the library but other kind of uh, the information which are requires to be assessed by you everything would be there and in case if you will have the queries there will be interactive sessions so everything would be clear to you so uh, see we have uh, publications and uh, the research activities are considered to be the very very important aspect of every university So university have uh, multiple journals. We have the uh, RGNLU Law Review. We have the Student uh, Research Review. We have RGNLU Financial and uh, Mercantile Law Review. We have Social Science uh, uh, Research Journal. We have Human Rights uh, Journal. So we have five different uh, in-house in publications. And in addition to that, we also publish some book series uh, of social science as well as uh, all the research centers. They are coming up one or the other kind of publications. and uh, all uh, what what you need to do you need to find out your area of interest and there is a, you keep uh, visiting the university library and erp system where every center is uh, issuing notices to uh, asking the students to become part of the centers so that and uh, so be watchful on the notices which would be put on the notice university website as well as well which are frequently coming up uh it facilities uh, for that uh, you need to contact the it people so that you will have your uh, uh, your identification number you also get your uh, id your password to access all the facilities available in the, in, during the virtual tour in the morning you have all seen that what kind of facilities so by by what time their uh, uh, it facilities will be enabled in terms of uh, email and everything previous is already been 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 Okay, okay. Yeah, you have the session, but we are through this communication. We are just informing. It's and we are only just informing that yes. these kind of things where you need to immediately. Yes. If you yes. have, uh, uh, you can also say some of the words and send some uh, feedback of today's session through your email, official email IDs. 
so that we'll also get it and you will also get it. Uh, so we have IT facilities. Uh, now this ERP system is very important, uh, not only for the students, if the parents are there, if they want that how the students are performing or whether the students are attending the classes or not, uh, you can also have the access to the uh, attendance portal where uh, we update the attendance on daily basis. So uh, by the evening, if you have you want that how many classes are attended by your awards, you can see it. Parents, well, can, parents also can also see it. So I, I would call upon the parents to be aware of this feature. If you are interested to know the, the how your ward is doing in terms of attending the classes, this is the key. And you have the master key with you. Yes. And, and this is very important for students also because this ERP, ERP portal is perhaps the means of communication between the university and students. All notices, all informations will be uploaded here. So, for example, your project topics will be uploaded here. Your attendance would be there. Your notices in terms of different uh, uh, requirement in different committees. Everything would be there. So, this would be the communication mod uh, in between the administration and the students from the university side. Uh, and and we can also do not uh, write through your personal email any longer. Yes. Now. Yes. Use your official. Okay. Email. Yes. That's right. And because you will not be able to assess the ERP until and unless you will log in through the university. Uh, log, maybe. These things, I think, tomorrow are there. Yeah, we are going to detail. detail. So tomorrow in detail, these things yeah. will be given to so, you. Uh, even the class schedule, when the class is scheduled, if the material and teaching schedule, teaching material is required to be shared, everything can be shared through this uh, ERP portal. Daily attendance would be shown. The parents can also go through it. And uh, consolidated attendance. We have attendance rules and we follow it very strictly, though in this mm -hmm. um, this uh, COVID period, the government has exempted it. But whenever this online offline classes would be there, then at least 70% uh, classes are required to be attended to appear in the examination. So be careful when it comes to attending the classes. Uh, so these are the attendance mm -hmm. rules, which are all, all also available on the university portal and website. I think they can read a lot of information is available. Oh, available the website. And we are also so I think this is a good time for you to be familiar with yeah. these regulations because this university follows these regulations <laughs> very strictly. So you should not be caught unaware of any of such things which you are already which you are supposed to know. And, and, and in the session where we'll discuss about the examination, yeah. we also will say that how no, that is a separate session. Yeah. session set. So all the, the examination, is, please. I would also say that please be there in all the sessions which are to be organized uh, in the next two days, no? Yes, sir. 31st and 1st. 31st and 1st. Yes. And this is very important uh, information for parents also that uh, we don't accept any cash uh, in the account yes. section here. So while sitting at your home through online banking or any mod, you can directly deposit uh, the fees of the students and the other uh, whatever examination fees or other kind of fees. Uh, no need to come to the account department with cash. You can directly by sitting at your home. Everything can be deposited. There is a system that will also be explained tomorrow. So while sitting here, you can directly transfer the fees and the other payments can be made online. Uh, now, internship and placement is very important. That will also be taken yeah, here in the details. Yes, uh, we have the uh, internship cell and we have the placement cell also. There are committees. The students are working. We have the dedicated faculty members. And everything will be informed you in detail in due course of time. So these are these are the placement process when you will reach in the fourth year and fifth year. This placement process will be issued. These are some of the recruiters. You name it, and we all have tier one, tier two forms. We have the uh, we have the uh, different PSUs. So our students are getting placements, but for that you need to work hard because uh, providing you opportunities and all kind of facilities in our hand. But at the your end, how much you receive and how much you perform based on your performance will provide you all the opportunities and the uh, recruitment takes place. Now, academic activities, uh, since uh, uh, the students are uh, not available and everything is uh, going online, now webinars are taking place mm -hmm. and in last uh, uh, few months and, and in coming few uh, months, if we are conducting all the classes and other sessions online, then you will find that uh, very frequently, almost all weekends, you will find some of the other kind of academic events by inviting the faculty members or inviting the experts to deliver lectures, webinars, seminars, yeah, conferences, yeah. everything will take place. And so everything will going on. Okay. These are the things which took place in recent past, and the same things will continue. This is uh, the uh, 
hmm? the joining of the yeah. vaishan <laughs> reason to yeah. after joining many of the uh, online activities took place this uh, we have mous with many foreign institutions and universities and uh, uh, over the vice chancellor is also working hard to have some exchange program for the students and faculty members so if you are keen uh, in exploring that possibilities you also go through the uh, the uh, institutions where you can explore the possibility of having a student exchange and do let us know so that we can explore those possibilities these are some of the events which took place in uh, recent past and the independence day celebration then the uh, air space law workshop then surana and surana court mood court competition we also have flagship mood court events every year we organize two or three national international mood court competition the students also frequently brings laurels to the institutions by winning multiple kind of uh, competitions at mood courts this is online lecture of fundamental criminal law practice delivered by uh, advocate sakla ji he is a renowned uh, personality he is again a very influential person in terms of in the area of criminal law and practice then uh, arjuna legal aid clinic is also uh, organizing many events these are some of the glimpses of the events which recent uh, past have organized by this uh, uh, legal aid uh, cell counseling took space so it's not that uh, only uh, we have the centers all the centers are very active and very frequently we organize multiple kind of activities we have also adopted uh, some of the villages here where we provide uh, multiple kind of facilities uh, these health centers health, health check up sports again we have gone through the facilities and all sorts of facilities are available we also have uh, zealous the sports fest of the university from last uh, one year or two year we have not organized it but it's a regular feature where we organize the uh, sports fest in the university where the other university takes part so the last the list took place these are all the glimpses of the university <laughs> and the cultural event and the sports events it's not only the all the time you will be busy with your books but you will be provided sufficient opportunity where you can engage in all sorts of uh, cultural events we have the cultural committee also we have sports committee you can uh, participate in that you can become members and suggest whatever ideas are your there and then it will be executed through we also have the student redressal uh, mechanism uh, and uh, address code also and uh, for uh, all these details will be shared in the detailed discussion uh, yeah. ragging is completely banned uh, there is no possibility we have strict rules and regulations for that then uh, internal com complaint committee we have uh, the redressal mechanism also and uh, uh, online also the portal is available you can uh, if you have any kind of uh, issues then you can inform us and very in a very 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 short period of time all your grievances will be redressed this is internal complaint committee all these informations are otherwise also available on the university yes, websites so you can just go through it so with this uh, <coughs> and i am again uh, handing over to the vice chancellor sir uh, i think this is the time uh, we are uh, in the last leg of uh, this uh, session today so i again uh, wish to have your feedback uh, from the students our parents they have seen a lot of things we have shown you uh, so many glimpses of the campus so is there anything that you wish to talk about at the moment briefly one or two persons can uh, speak up even the parents can do hi yes. sir can you hear me yes yes yeah so i just had a question regarding the session that is supposed to be held tomorrow i think there's some confusion is it tomorrow or is it on the 31st 31st it's on 31st and 1st not 31st tomorrow. Tomorrow. not tomorrow. we have okay. we have just shared the schedule you check your emails oh, yeah, and that that's how it's confused 31st and 1st there's no yeah, scope okay. for confusion okay thank you yeah. so much thank you Great. Any, any, uh, okay, students, I'll be keep talking. Any parents particularly wish to, you know, share their ideas or views or anything? See, I am open Good for anything which can bring improvement in the profile of the university, in the functioning of the university. Please let me know. Yes, go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Shreya Jain, uh, this side. So I'm yes. very fortunate to be a part of the Ragnoul family. and i have always been enamored by law and the spirit of justice so i further wish to reinforce my idea about the ideal of justice and uh, so um, i look forward to having a great five years uh, in the college and so i'm eagerly waiting for offline campus in the virtual tour and everything 
even even we are i think as teachers primarily i am also a teacher so we never derive the exact amount of satisfaction as we do in case of physical classes virtual classes is a compulsion and we are working under certain constraints but i am telling you that we are quite keen to have you on the campus because then we would be doing it very effectively we would be on our full potential we are not working on our full potential because of a lot of you know barriers of course there are barriers and uh, law is such a subject which becomes very live when face to face discussion and group interactions take place where interventions are allowed and there is a criss cross of ideas here and there we generate new ideas as in the morning the the uh, rajkumar was saying that many of uh, you would feel that your conventional understanding about the world law and everything would be demolished i would say because we are exposed to new ideas new thinking new theories new concepts new paradigms that would challenge your conventional ideas and wisdom so you would be for a while would be little uh, troubled but that is how the knowledge grows that is how the knowledge is generated so so there is no fixed identities there is no fixed ideas in the legal law is that's why it's very fascinating terrain where you would be exposed to a very challenging ideas as the world is moving the things are in contemporary the world over fortunately this university is very well placed and wise to capture all those ideas yes uh anybody else yes uh, sir sir to be speaking yes uh, who is speaking charvi yeah, charvi. You, yeah charvi yes <laughs> anyway you are actually i enjoyed it too much earlier i was confident about the like level of education that i was going to achieve but the en environment with what all i have seen now i am i'm feeling like i just want to go into the campus and start studying there itself you know the pleasure is spoiled when it is described <laughs> so we, we couldn't describe enough to you i'm telling you the, the we'll have you uh, we'll find out some ways uh, for the first year group to experience the campus that i am some some of you told me so I, my mind is working on that immediately after this session i'll try to find out some ways and means to really have you and to welcome you physically and uh, just to talk to you no that is Thank how you, we are very open on that it's a very progressive Thanks. institution it, it, we we imbibe a very you know you know very very wider vision uh, on on all the issues yes uh so just deep core is saying something in chat max i am i'm reading all the messages who are unable to open up their microphone for some reason hello never mind. yeah hello good so afternoon I, hello sir good afternoon Yes, good so afternoon. The session was absolutely incredible, and uh, the faculty has been very cooperative. Uh, in the recent times, I haven't seen much more cooperative faculty. And uh, looking at you, uh, you being uh, such a renowned personality, but still being. I missed something important. Are you sure? Motive, brother. Yes. I'll ask. Ayush, uh, I think we'll hear uh, Ayush uh, very soon. Probably. Yeah. I think. So I guess he was see. just trying to say that you are such a, a cool yeah. vice chancellor. I mean, uh, we are just trying to comprehend the fact that he just asked uh, for us for dinner. So I guess that's what he was trying to say, and he just <laughs> no. stopped in midway. So you are just super uh, cool. <laughs> super cool. I have. I have. I have. I have spent a lot of time in national law universities, more than fifteen, seventeen years. and my only strength is my ability to connect with the students and i rely on that and i'll not disappoint you you will really enjoy the entire place the faculty leaves it's a marvelous place to be in and yes so go on Arun, yes sir you... so getting sir, back to what i was saying i'm excited to meet you oh my god yes, sir, i'm still looking forward for the dinner i'm really yes, looking forward sir, for the want dinner for we are sir it, is, it got recorded also by the way <laughs> yes, I'm. Yes, I'm looking forward for it. Coolness represented by our attitude is really magnetic. That's what you know, taking yes, us to university day by day. Sir, we yes. want you for prime minister. 
Oh, there you go. We will vote for you. I am. I am actually not uh, very keen to. I. 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 I really like to be a teacher. I would like to come. I'll come to your classes. Actually. Yes, sir. But after I... our batch, please. I mean, we want you as yeah. a, our vice chancellor till our batch ends. So please, after that. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah, so nice to you. Yes, Ishita. Hello, sir. Sir, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Uh, yeah, this is Usha here, sir. Yes, yes, Usha. Yes, yeah. please. So pleased to be uh, in the inauguration um, session today, sir. I mean, the virtual tour and you know the entire speech was so inspiring. And um, our kid being the first, uh, you know, law professional uh, in our family, uh, we just let her go, follow her dreams and her passion. So you know, and um, you know, to be very far, right? I mean, we are from South India, so kind of you know, able to send her with such a confidence is really reassuring, sir. Thank you so much, and we really look forward to kind of you know, sure she will make time. us proud. She will make us proud very soon to us yes, and sir. to your family both. And Thank I'm you, looking Thank that. Thank you. you who knows? You will become chief justice. You will become judge. You will <laughs> become what part? All future belong. Yes, I always say, yes, this is a great uh, opportunity for all of us to together because see the educational institutions are very important places. You know, they are the energy field. I call them energy fields. Because here the people get transformed into good human beings, into good professionals. And combining the quality of uh, ethical orientation with professional orientation is something which is required in this country. In India is marching very fast on these lines. They are producing very good professionals. And these law universities have taken upon them to create a really very mature and professionally excellent force of uh, workers and they could contribute to the growth of the country. We have a very broad vision to you know, have, but we'll do it very you know, easily. We are not burdening anybody. We are not making it complicated because you should, you need to go in a liberal spaces. These are very liberal spaces. Universities are very liberal spaces. And I'm a great votary of this tradition of liberal spaces, liberal thinking, and the growth of idea and knowledge. So, uh, wonderful. Nice Anybody else before we... So, may I? Yes, sir. May I? Yeah, yes. yeah I want to ask Arbidai Hathri, like, lucky students have a precious... Yes. What she said? Do we have a precious? Like, precious. In precious. Our yeah, once, once everybody... Is virtual freshers party oh virtual freshers sure. party i i don't oh, mind i think like offline 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 yeah. offline. Okay. offline yes yes sir. let let me see what can be done to that because there are certain restrictions otherwise i am more keen uh, than you probably to have that because we have also got bored in these deserted this is a big uh, institution but deserted you know all places look very deserted look you know so uh, I also invite my faculty colleagues at the moment. If they have to respond to anything the students have said, my colleagues are very interested actually in speaking up. Yes, anybody online wish to say anything? It's your day as well. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, is, uh, yes, yes. Siddharth, uh, Siddharth Fuller is a very you know interesting person. I tell you, and uh, he will be, he will be a great company to you. He lives next to the hostel. He's a warden also. No? He is a board, warden also. But this is nothing to terrorize you. He is a <laughs> wonderful person and a very good colleague, and uh, he teaches uh, constitutional law. Yes, that. So, what do you want to say to students? Sir, sir, I wanted to congratulate all the students for joining us, and I want to welcome them. And I assure them that uh, all the students and their parents that will be there with you, not just for next five years, but for the times to come in days ahead. Uh, all the best, everyone. Thank you. Great, great, great. Siddharth, thank you for all the encouragement to these friends. Yes. Any, any, any other teacher who is available online? And uh, that I would, that yes, I would like to, sir, uh, myself, Dr. Shiva Satish. Yes, I would like yes, to congratulate all the students having made it to this place. 
this is not just law for five years it's a lifetime of experience and i assure all of them that they are going to have the best time when it comes to learning best time when it comes to intellectual enrichment and best time when it comes to the campus life i wish you all the best and i welcome you all thank you sir thank you so much any any student wish to meet any particular teacher you must have seen our file now i am going in a different way <laughs> if you have any demand to come to meet any say hello to any teacher yes sir yes. i want to say hi to sociology teacher <laughs> मुझे वैसा लग रहा है जैसे कौन बनेगा करोड़पति में अमिताभ बच्चन बहुत बड़े स्टार्ट से मीटिंग करा देते हैं ना लगभग मैं आपका वैसे ही कुछ कर रहा हूँ तो और किसी स्टूडेंट्स को किसी टीचर को मिलना हो तो फिर मुझे बताओ हिस्ट्री टीचर रचना you have rightly pointed she is one of the most dynamic person but we have two teachers here and both are equally dynamic so okay. if you want to but say after i'm looking forward to great to see you and i am delighted that at least i am also in demand i thought economics would be good yeah economics is absolutely in demand they <laughs> are wonderful see see this is these are my students you know first hand feedback to you I'm great. Thank you, Dhanya. You made my day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Any any other teacher sir. to be? If I may, sir, I want to send my to everyone. I congratulate all the students. I teach economics ah. here, and I look yes, forward sir. to see you all. Great, both the teachers. So it's here. so great. good to see these smiling faces. Yes, yes, sir. They are all Thank very you interesting. Much all the very Thank best. Thank you, ma'am. Good to see Thank you too. You. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Any other teacher to be called? Sir, I want to send my greetings to all the teachers. Teachers, it is just you. Will I get you? You have to work very hard to meet them. So actually, fall science teacher, but I'm not taking fall science major because of economics. So hopefully, I want to send my greetings to all the teachers out there. And I'm waiting to meet you all. Science, thank you, sir. Political science. Shweta ji, you are here. Where are you? 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 um can 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 i have this specific query regarding political science i'm trying no, to no, get no, my video we just wanted to say hello to you <laughs> <laughs> so actually you said wants to have the interaction with you only so <laughs> this has been one of the most lively orientations that we've had and like this opportunity to share with all the students that uh, we are a lively bunch of people and uh, we learn together that's one feature that we have in our classes we learn together alongside with our students and uh, so the learning becomes uh, becomes a journey to become better together so we'll go grow old if i may say so <laughs> we'll grow old together we'll go grow wiser together 
political science uh, for now we are offering as major and minor both and um, well while you decide on your major and minor this is not going to reflect or have any impact on your choice of um, ultimate uh, specializations that you're going to opt for law right and uh, we are two teachers and as uh, professor bajpayee has already mentioned uh, you won't find us only in political science papers we'll be there as per our uh, interest and contributions that we can make in other subjects as well. So that's one novelty, which is a very welcome novelty that uh, Professor Barclay has, uh, uh, you know, reintroduced in the system. And uh, it's a very welcome thing. And um, yeah, look forward to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hi, up. <laughs> anyway, the so, teachers uh, have their own, uh, they are here and there. Anything else, dear students, which I can do for you? Otherwise, uh, we are about to conclude. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good Am afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, Ashtray. Uh, sir, yes. I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, thank you and just say that I'm really grateful to be a part of something huge and with all these wonderful students and with all this uh, wonderful faculty, it's an honor. And as you said, the thing that most impacted me today from the orientation, as you said earlier, was that the part where you said that it's a it's a privilege. If you see after COVID, a lot of students didn't get the chance to go to college or uh, didn't get to complete the education. So it is a uh, privilege for all of us, and we should not take this. Uh, for granted and it also ensures a sense of responsibility and uh, gratitude within us. Really, I appreciate your uh, sentiment. We are all passing through, but we have to make, uh, you know, as much as fruitful this exercise we need to, we will not allow this to be wasted. You have put up so much effort in getting the threat cleared despite challenges here and there. And uh, please uh, be assured that uh, We'll try to put up everything that would make your learning possible, your learning productive and fruitful. You will not find us wanting in that direction. So I'm committed to that goal. And we have a strategy. We have a definite process to do that. It's not that we are tentative or something. We have a very set plan for first year. And we will not only teach you, we will provide you a very participatory role here and there where you will grow as a, as, a, as a learner, as a student, as a scholar. And you will realize this difference very soon. As you rightly said, you are in a great company of uh, very able faculty. And this university brings together a lot of exciting avenues and pursuits to, to provide you a very good perspective about the legal education and about everything. But at the same time, you would like you to be grow to your fullest possibilities. I have seen the first year students sometimes they say and become loyal, but by the third year their goals change because their perspective and horizons get widened with the passage of time, and that is the real growth. And you start discussing about the options and different type of. And uh, luckily we have a very good network with institutions, people, organizations. So everything is for you. This university is for you. We are for you. We are for you, you know. Yes, sir. Okay. So, and so, also, sir, uh, we all admired the uh, energy that you guys brought there today. It also inspires us and also motivates us. Yes, I know that uh, we had uh, tough times, so we have to keep our spirits high. Despite all odds, we'll rise above. And uh, this is what I have to say today. And uh, I think this is time to close. Yes, yes. Hmm? So over to repeat for you over to registrar also. Registrar is there. So we request our registrar sir to for closing to again extend a vote of thanks to the <laughs> students, especially their parents who've taken time for us today. Thank you. Thank you, dear friend parents and the students we hope uh, you have enjoyed it and uh, naturally the motivated lecture 
even by professor c c rajkumar vice chancellor jindal global university and uh, honorable justice siri arjun sikri former just supreme court of india and uh, member parliament and uh, at senior advocate supreme court of india and the highlights which are given uh, by our uh, sporting staff and elaborating further by your own vice chancellor the vision of our vice chancellor for executing the teaching pedagogy in a beautiful way so we thankful to all the parents and joining hands in executing and making it successful event for the life of the their own wards and the humble request to even the parents as our vice chancellor has stated please remain in contact with your wards with the institute with the university your contact your support will definitely will uh, help us to grow this institution in a as a remarkable institution as a uh, hub of the education we wish all the parents all the students and we hope the normalcy in the social social life and we hope at the earliest that the normalcy will be there and very soon will be just meeting in the campus stay healthy everybody and stay safe thank you faculty colleagues all the sporting staff this event would not have been the successful without the sporting of our sporting staff id people and all the faculty colleagues and the students thank you vice chancellor sir for your visionary uh, idea guiding uh, the students and uh, the teachers thank you sir thank you students thank you parents stay healthy so thank you everyone stay safe stay happy stay blessed see you soon thank you bye 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 sir thank you sir Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.